All right. Blessed morning, everyone. Happy Monday po sa ating lahat. Today is November 23, 2020, and hashtag Team LRC is back for another exciting learning opportunity entitled One Stat at a Time, a webinar series on basic statistical tools and techniques and research. This time, makakasama po natin sa webinar series na ito ang mga professors mula sa Institute of Statistics ng College of Arts and Sciences dito sa UP Los Baños. Kumusta po ang ating umaga? Taas po ang kamay ng mga maagang gumisi para talaga pong makatutok sa ating webinar ngayon. Sige nga po, sino ang ating mga early birds ngayong 9 a.m. session natin? Sige po, mag-ingay po kayo sa ating comment section. Nakita ko po madami na yung nagko-comment sa ating comment section box. Ano? So just keep them coming. And uh, we hope lahat po ay nakapag-almusal na rin po kasi ang session po natin today is an extensive webinar nga po on basic statistical tools and techniques and research. So expect nyo po that this will be a three-hour long webinar. So uh, sa kalagitnaan naman po magkakaroon tayo ng 15-minute break just for us to relax a bit and then sabak na po ulit tayo sa ating session. Okay po ba yan? All right, we hope so. We have three sessions po for One Stat at a Time webinar series and today is our first session entitled Move On from Your Experiment, Basic Experimental Design. Sa mga hindi po makamove on sa kanilang mga experiments, well, ito na po ang inyong pagkakataon para makapag-move forward sa inyong mga research. Ano po? Parang sa isang relasyon lang po, ano? hindi ka matatahimik hanggat walang closure mula sa isang ex or past relationship, di ba? So may ganong hugot, no? Aga-aga, ang lalim agad ng hugot. Anyway, so instead of running away from our thesis, from our experiments, bakit hindi po natin linawin yan ngayong araw? Naks naman, o di ba? So again, sa mga early words natin sa FB Live, magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Kung wala pa po dito ang inyong mga kaibigan, kaklase o kasamahan, Aba, tawagin niyo na po sila. Let's all learn together how to move forward from our experiments. Kaya itag niyo na po sila sa ating FB Live. I-share niyo din po ang ating video and share the learnings this morning, lalong-lalo na po sa mga nangangailangang matapos sa kanilang mga research. As of this morning po, meron po tayong 5,302 registered participants. Grabe. Ganyan po ba kadami ang gustong mag-move on? Ay, ay, mag-move on from research or experiment or matuto? Well, again, thank you so much po for taking interest in this webinar series. Wag po kayong mag-alala. We will do it one step at a time. Oh, ha? <laughs> All right. I hope onward na po tayong lahat. It's 9.05 in the morning. Welcome to un welcome to uh, unplug pa rin, ano? Welcome to <laughs> One Stat at a Time. Ayan. So this is our webinar series po on basic statistical tools and uh, techniques and research. And we are on our first session entitled Move On from Your Experiment, Basic Experimental Designs. I am Cheryl Hermosa Ebron, the University Extension Associate and Training Coordinator of UPLB Learning Resource Center, and I will be our session's moderator. Just a few friendly reminders po for our today's webinar. First, kindly always keep your comments helpful and considerate to our speaker, to the moderator, and to your fellow participants. Second, if you have questions, feel free to comment them down below on our comment section box. They will be addressed po by our speaker after the discussion. And also, please be reminded to uh, keep your comments relevant to our topic. All right. And most importantly, please do not forget to answer the evaluation form after the webinar. Our team will deeply appreciate for your comments and suggestions. Again, the deadline of submission of responses will be only until 7 p.m. today. So please make sure for that you answer the evaluation form on or before 7 p.m. Otherwise, for you will not be able to receive your e-certificate of participation. Okay? Sa mga hindi pa po, sa mga hindi po makakapanood ng live today dahil naka-mobile data po kayo 
o kaya naman po ay nasa mga klase o kaya po ay may kasabay ng mga ganap sa umagang ito, huwag po kayong mag-alala, mapapanood pa rin po ninyo ang ating mga session sa aming YouTube channel. I-search na lamang po yung UPLB Learning Resource Center. As of now po, we already have 493 subscribers on YouTube. Kaya po, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Wag, wag din pong kalimutang i-click yung ating notification bell para updated tayo palagi sa ating mga videos. And please also follow us on our Instagram and Twitter accounts. Wow, Twitter. <laughs> Twitter accounts. Pwede nyo rin pong mapunood ang replay ng ating session sa aming Facebook page ng LRC. Like nyo rin po ang aming page. Truly, we are grateful and thankful po for your overwhelming support dahil patuloy po ang paglago ng ating social community from 2,000 followers po from March to June po yan. Ngayon po, we are now close to 40,000 strong followers as of today. So we are so amazed po and humbled at the same time. Sana po ay patuloy po kami makapaglingkod sa inyo sa abit na, sa abot ng aming mga kakaya. And gamitin nyo rin po ang ating official hashtag ng ating webinar series which is hashtag one stat at a time para madali po natin makita ang ating mga videos and resources using that hashtag. Alright! Muli po ang ating palaging tanong. Jane na ba kayo? Handa na po ba tayong mag-move on at mag-move forward sa ating mga experiments? Well, if G ka na, then let's do it one stat at a time. To give her opening remarks and inspirational message, may we kindly recognize our exceptionally diligent, engaged, and hardworking new Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. Please welcome our beloved Vice Chancellor, Dr. Jean O. Loyola. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Cheryl. Uh, good morning sa Team LRC at sa lahat ng uh, participants. Uh, as you all know, I'm very busy uh, as BCAA, pero uh, I, I can't say no to Dr. Floor, ano? kasi I, uh, uh, I believe in her programs at uh, gusto ko rin uh, ma-meet kahit through Zoom ang ating mga uh, students. So I hope uh, you are all well and coping uh, with the challenges uh, brought about by uh, remote uh, learning. So napakaganda ng uh, inyong topic ano how to move on from your ex. Okay? Um ayaw kong kuhanin ng oras yung sa tutorial, no? Uh, so hindi ko na ikukuwento yung aking uh, uh, mga exes and why's. Okay, but uh, ang message ko lang for everybody is this, uh, alam kong nahihirapan lahat sa remote learning pero walang, wala tayong ibang choice but to cope no? with it and all the challenges na kasama niya. And uh, may love letter ako sa faculty actually and I I was planning to uh, write a love letter din sa estudyante, hindi lang ako bigyan ng pagkakataon. Okay, pero first of all, uh, madaling mag-move on from your ex, ano? If instead of capitalizing on the pain, the hardships, uh, you focus on the lessons. Ano? Uh, sadyang mahirap pang remote learning dahil puro tayo bago dito. Walang may alam talaga kung anong dapat gawin. Ano? But uh, all we can do is to adjust. Ano? And uh, after listening, of course, to all uh, the sectors of the uh, university, uh, always think of uh, the greater good. Ano? Uh, hindi man sa tingin nyo sapat ang natututunan nyo sa mga klase, may mga important lessons ang mga na-experience natin uh, this semester, especially sa remote learning. Uh, more than anything else, mas kailangan natin ng uh, care, compassion ano, sa bawat isa. No? How to move on from your ex. Ano? You, you treat everybody special. Ano? So do not uh, burn bridges. Masakit man na experience natin sa, sa remote learning. Uh, hopefully, it will uh, make you better persons, ano? stronger ano? persons. And uh, so UPLB, uh, always avail of the opportunities ano? na ino-offer ng iba't-ibang uh, offices. 
uh, siguro darating din yung time na makakabalik kayo lahat sa campus. At uh, ang description ko sa UPLB campus para siyang Wikipedia or encyclopedia. Napakasarap ano, makipag-usap sa iba't ibang eksperto, sa iba't ibang uh, larangan ano, sa UPLB. So nasa inyo na yon kung i-avail nyo yung opportunities. Pero hindi lang yung klase, hindi lang yung lesson sa classrooms ang mahalaga. Minsan, the more important lessons in life ay nasa labas ng classroom. No? So if you get uh, the chance to talk to the uh, professors, um, experts from other fields, ano? hindi lang yun sa field nyo, ano? grab the chance. Ano? Kasi it will make you a better person with wider horizon, with a better perspective. It will make you more understanding. Uh, it will make you realize ano, kung, kung ano yung mga realities ng iba't ibang uh, uh, tao. And uh, always give your best. Ano? Kahit na mahirap. Uh, wag kayo makontento sa pwede na yan. Ano? So you always challenge yourself. Hindi para sa grade. Ano? But uh, uh, so you will know yourself better. It's only when you give your best tsaka mo malalaman ang iyong limit ano and uh, kung meron ka pang uh, target you can address ano your shortcomings okay so there will be a greater chance for you to uh, to meet ano your uh, target uh, i can talk all day ano kaya lang ay para ito sa tutorial sa stats so i have to say goodbye uh, now so i wish everybody well just stay healthy alive and uh, hopefully makakabalik tayo lahat sa campus and we can meet ano in uh, person and i can tell you my uh, true stories paano ko naka on sa aking mga excess thank you thank you so much vc jane for for that very inspiring message ano po indeed now more than ever, we must continue to build, encourage, and support one another because these are very challenging times, both for students, professors, in, and even professionals like us. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. Okay, bye. All right. Now, let, next up, well, let's have a short energizer. Sa mga expert na po dyan sa ating menti.com, you guys know the drill. You know what to do. Sa mga ngayon pa lamang po gagamit ng platform na ito, don't worry, madali lamang po ito. First step po is you have to open or a new window and go to www.menti.com. Second, please use our key code. You can also see that code on your screen which is 4599611. Then answer the two questions there po. Alright, so let me also post the link sa ating uh, FB Live para po makasunod naman yung iba ano, sa ating um, menti.com. Hold on lang po. Let me just open my Facebook Live. Alright, it's already posted there. Now let me just share my screen so we could also see the uh, live results of our menti.com. Hold on. Let me check. Alright. Ayan, may sumasagot na po ba? Ayan, may sumasagot na. Can we see it? All right. So, ang ating question po, first question is, should you still be friends with your ex? Ang answers po ay yes, no, and it depends. So, so far po, as we can see on our screen, leading po ang it depends. At yung yes ay 55. Yung no ay 35. Aba? <laughs> Meron talagang no. Alin po sa inyo, should you be friends with your ex? Dahil ang ating title nga po is moving on or move on from your ex experiment. So parang hinahalin tulad po natin sa isang ex ang pag-move on sa ating research. Ano? Kung hindi natin haharapin ay hindi matatapos. So so far po, we have, wow, overwhelming po. We have 344, 49 and counting. Sige po, paabutin ko lang po ba ito ng uh, 400 probably? Should you be friends with your ex? Pwede pa rin po bang maging friends ang mga naging mag-ex na? Parang ang peg pala natin ngayong morning ay mag-ex and wives. <laughs> okay, 397, 400. Ayan. So, most of you sabi it depends. Well, sa akin po, yeah, it depends. Kung gusto mong mag-move forward from a relationship, um, don't be friends yet. Pero kung nakapag-move forward ka na from that relationship, edi sige, pwede na ulit maging friends. Alright? 
Next question. Let's check. Okay, next question po is, what do you expect to gain from our session on basic experimental design? So, ayan. Ano po ang um, nais niyong matutunan sa umagang ito from our session which is entitled Moving on from your um, experiments, basic experimental design. So, pwede niyo pong uh, pwede po kayo maglagay ng one word or two words just to give our speaker a background um, kung ano po yung gusto nyong uh, makuha from this session. Ayan, may nakikita na tayo sa screen na CRD, RCBD, statistical analysis, uh, sa pinakagitna po ng word cloud natin, no, RCBD ang nakalagay. New learnings, knowledge, methods, All right, CRD, ayan. Ano pa? Different met methods, setting up RSM experiment, uh, statistical treatment. May nakita akong certificate daw. Well, more than the certificates, but we would like you guys to um, learn a lot of insights from this session. Okay? So I'm seeing here on my screen, po, there are 133, 44, 52, and wow, 172. Sige po, natin ng mga... 300 po siguro, kung kaya. Ayan, statistical analysis, methods, knowledge talaga. RCBD. Okay, so bale parang apat po yung nakikita natin na pinakamalaki dun sa word cloud, meaning most of you, ito po yung gusto ninyong makuha from this session. Okay, so knowledge, methods, statistical analysis. Um, all right, RCBD. All right, so I guess that's it. Thank you so much, Paul, for answering our menti.com. Ayan po yung ating short energizer. So I hope energized na energized na po tayo at ready, ready na po tayo sa ating session for this morning. So let us now proceed with the main part of our session. Allow me to introduce to you our speaker for this morning. She is an assistant professor in the Institute of Statistics, College of Arts and Sciences here in UP Los Baños since 2016. She teaches courses in elementary statistics, statistical methods, introductory statistical theory, experimental designs, and statistics for the social sciences. In 2016, she finished her Bachelor of Science degree in statistics here in UP Los Baños, and not long after, she completed her master's degree in statistics, minor in environmental science, also here in UPLB in 2019. Here to share with us how to move forward from our experiments by learning the basic experimental designs, please welcome Professor Christine Dale, our Alcaide. Ma'am Dale, you may now have the Zoom space. Hello, good morning, everyone. So, magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Magandang umaga sa ating mga uh, viewers from uh, ating Facebook Live. So, good morning sa ating lahat. So, for this session and for this webinar series, so I would like to welcome you all. Um, this uh, first part of the One Stat at a Time series will be all about uh, basic experimental designs with the title. So, ayan. So I hope you can see the screen. Move on from your ex. Pero may pahabol, ano? Move on from your experiment. So um, this session will be all about basic um, design structures and experimental design. So hopefully, ay marami tayong matutunan for this session. Um, sana ay lahat tayo ay makasunod. But before we proceed with the session and with the presentation, so... I hope um, everyone is ready to um, bago tayo mag-usap tungkol sa ating experiment. Okay, so before we proceed with that, before we talk about our experiment, so let's first let's first talk about you guys. So please go to again menti.com with the code of one five three two. Nine five five. So again, before we proceed with the um, with the seminar, with the webinar, so let's first uh, talk about you guys. So please go to menti.com um, with the code one five three two nine five five. So for a short question and answer portion about you. So later, yung about our ex. 
experiment. So let me share my screen for this um, menti.com. So kita na ang ating menti.com. I hope you are all there. Meron na tayong nakikita ng like button. So hello sa ating lahat. So welcome to this webinar, guys. Are you ready to begin? So if yes, sige, antay-antayin natin ng konti. Dumami yung ating um, likers at saka yung ating mga hearts dun sa baba. Okay po? So um, let's first talk about you. Ayan, sige. So for our first question, so to, uh, um, to make us ready and a bit, you know, um, hindi tayo masyadong kabahan o hindi tayo masyadong matakot dun sa ating session. So, pag-usapan muna natin tayo. Okay? So, this morning, nung bumangon tayo, which of the following images best illustrates your mood? So, nung bumangon ka kaninang umaga, um, are you like happy-happy, very positive? So, kita natin yung bata nung no? nagla-like siya. And then, um, are you just smiling? So, parang pagising mo kaninang umaga, um, it's a beautiful day and I should smile and I should be positive all day. <laughs> or are you like, um, yung pangatlo nating option, siguro um, di ka ganun kasaya or di ka ganun nakangiti, poker face lang, kumbaga. Another is, um, are you quite sad or something bothering you? And then lastly, yung ating last option ay, medyo inaantok ka pa ba nung bumangon ka this morning? So, um, pili lang kayo dyan guys. Madami tayong nakikitang um, responses. So, that's good. So, uh, ayan. So, I hope, guys, kahit pa paano ay madami naman yung positive sa atin, ano, pero nag, naglalaban yung masaya at saka yung inaantok. <laughs> so, probably, um, marami sa atin yung napabangon ng maaga dahil sa maraming bagay. And I, I think this is one of them. So, siguro meron tayo talagang gustong gawin or gustong matutunan from this webinar series. So for our next question. Okay. So let's head on to the next question. Why did you decide to participate in this webinar? So pwede kayo maglagay siya ng response. <laughs> okay. So ano sa tingin nyo yung reason why you decided to participate in this webinar. So, is this for your project, for your thesis, or for your special problem, or just to learn, to review? So, um, meron ba kayong project sa, say, sa inyong uh, trabaho? Ayan. So, ano sa tingin nyo yung reason? What is your main motivation to attend this session? So, meron tayo nakikita I'm very happy that the highest or probably the biggest word that we are seeing in our cloud is to learn. So, to be able to learn in this webinar. So, uh, may mga nakikita pa tayong mga um, uh, words like review, knowledge, refresher, to gain knowledge, yes. And uh, ayon. so medyo umiikot dyan sa word cloud na yan, yung reason kung bakit tayo nag-attend this session. So I hope by learning in this session, we'd also be able to learn in a fun way or in an effective way. So sabi nga nila, everything should, can be learned when you put fun in learning. So mas effective daw kapag masaya tayo or gusto natin yung ginagawa natin. So I hope habang tayo ay nat natututo dito sa ating session, I, um, uh, let's try to be, um, have Let's try to have an internal locus of control. So you are here because you want to learn by yourself. So walang any external factor. In that way, mas makikita natin yung essence or mas magiging effective yung pag-aaral natin sa webinar series na ito. So going back to our presentation. So I hope that was a refresher for you guys. So wag kabahan, wag matakot. Ano. So this is just about any other topic that we can learn. So, sabi nila kasi kapag daw statistics medyo nakakakaba. Ano, medyo, um, alam mo yun, kapag kukuha ka, say, you are an undergraduate student, kapag kukuha ka ng stock course, parang, ah, kaya ko ba to? Or, um, baka hindi ko, baka hindi ko kaya mag-isa. So, kailangan ko ng kasama. Parang ganun, ano. So, we're here. LRC team is here, Institute of Statistics is here to, he to hear your thoughts and to help you um, in these kinds of uh, topics. So we'll start with the experimental 
design. Ayan. So, going on? Okay. So, we'll talk about, so, nabanggit kanina ni VC Jean, ano, so, meron daw siyang X's and Y's. Pero dito sa ating session, I would like to call it my experiment in the house. So, my X in the house. Bakit siya hindi Y? Bakit siya how? So, we'll try to learn how these experiments work and we'll try to see how can we apply them in our, say, research, in our papers, or in our, um, in our special problems and such. So, um, first, uh, we'll talk about, just a bit, ano, we'll just talk about research and how is experiment or doing experiments essential or indeed a very special part of doing research. And then we'll also talk about uh, the difference between observational and experimental studies. So, ito yung medyo kailangan natin iset na um, na thinking before we proceed with discussing about experimental studies. How is it different from observational ones? And then also, so about our discussion, we'll do experimental designs. Definition of some terms which you need to understand first before doing the design structures. And then the principles, structures, and other structures. So nandito na yung completely randomized design, which I think most of you are familiar about randomized complete block design, and the Latin square design. So this will be the focus of our discussion. So unfortunately, due to limited time, we cannot cover other design structures. So we'll just work on completely randomized design, or CRD, RCBD, and Latin square design. So before we proceed with that, so kailangan muna natin maisip or kailangan muna natin tanungin yung mga sarili natin. What is research? At bakit ba essential yung pagkakandak ng experiment with uh, my research? Okay, so let's look at this video. Okay, so check natin. Pakiready ang inyong mga volume para okay ang ating video. In most cases, we find that we just fall into research without knowing the how or the why. Sometimes just curiosity, sometimes academic pursuits. In most cases, we find that we just fall into research without knowing the how or the why. Sometimes just curiosity, sometimes academic pursuits of knowledge and recognition and sometimes a deeper desire to contribute or solve a larger problem for society. Regardless of what your motivations for doing research are, it is important to take a step back and look at the picture. What is research? It always begins with a question used to discover or create new knowledge. It can involve the synthesis and analysis of existing It is important to take a step back and look at the broader picture. What is research? It always begins with a question used to discover or create new knowledge. It can involve the synthesis and analysis of existing knowledge in novel and creative ways to generate new concepts, methodologies or understandings. Or it can be used to understand phenomena, improve existing solutions, revise accepted theories in light of new facts, or to generate questions for future inquiry. Research involves a purposeful and systematic investigation in search of an answer that has relevance to the world we are living in, thereby increasing knowledge. This occurs through observation, experimentation, gathering and analysis of information, or the collection of data in accordance with suitable methodologies and guidelines. It then involves critical analysis and interpretation of that information to ensure reliability and validity of the results. And finally, evaluation of the hypothesis or framework posed with support from the existing literature. The findings are designed to contribute generalizable insight for the research community. 
This can be through developing further ideas, applying new theories, solving problems, or improving understanding within the larger body of existing research knowledge. Ultimately, research is an original contribution, interpretation, or view that builds upon the work of the scholars in the field before us. Our research allows us to see further by standing on the shoulders of giants. Ayan, so sabi dun sa ating video, our research allows us to see further by standing in the shoulders of our giant. So in that case, guys, I hope medyo nagkaroon tayo ng idea what we'll be talking about in this session. How experiments is a very, how, how doing an experiment is a fundamental part of our research. Okay, so... So let's try to jump into our discussion. I hope lahat tayo ay naka-ready na at naka-pwesto na dyan sa ating mga lugar. So I hope I'll be able to share to you guys what I know and what I have learned in the previous uh, years that I've been studying statistics and also experimental design. So experiments in the scientific research. Basically, what is a scientific research? So nakita natin dun sa ating discussion earlier, it is an organized and systematic way of finding answers to questions. And it is it includes the collection of methods and uh, that researchers apply systematically to produce scientifically based knowledge. So magkakaroon, meron tayong iba't ibang methods to um, to use in our research. And as we know, statistics play an important role. It plays an important role in every essential stage such as planning, data collection, analysis, and interpretation of results. So sa bawat part na magkakandak tayo ng, sa bawat part or essential stage ng research, statistics is indeed an essential step or an essential um, part of these stages. And um, to define as well, kagaya nung narinig natin kanina sa ating um, video, so an experiment, it is a research design which provides the highest level of evidence of cost and effect relationship between a treatment or exposure and the response or the outcome. So this will be the main um, discussion for this webinar. How does this experiments work? How can we design our experiment? And how can we see the cost and effect relationship between two variables? When we say there's two variables, we have the treatment or the exposure we are looking at and its effect to some kind of a response or outcome. So, kita natin dito sa definition natin, meron tayong treatment or factor na pinag-aaralan at gusto nating malaman kung ano yung effect nito by observing the response or the outcome. It is characterized by the presence of treatments and experimental units to be used. So recall the term guys, we'll be defining these terms later on. And by the way, treatments are assigned to units and by the responses that are measured. So how do we assign these treatments to our experimental units? So pag sinabi nating treatments, so ito yung tinitingnan natin or gusto nating malaman kung may effect ba siya doon sa ating experimental units. So pag sinabi naman nating experimental units, these are mainly the subjects or the units to where we will be assigning our treatments. So later on, we'll be defining these terms more um, uh Mas pa define natin sila later on. So first, uh, kagaya na nabanggit ko kanina, we first need to define or we first need to um, know what an observational and experimental study is and how are they different. So kapag observational guys, it's uh, these are units are this this is a kind of study wherein units are observed in the normal environment that they exist. So ibig sabihin when we are doing an observational study, we are not looking for a specific treatment or a specific factor. We are only um we are only observing um say a population on the normal environment that they exist. We may be looking at some factors but we are not um, we are not work, We are not doing anything on these factors or in these treatments. We are only observing 
the natural environment. But as for the experimental studies, this is a study wherein units are observed in an environment that is highly controlled by the researcher. This means that we are trying to control the environment such that the treatment will only be the focus of our study. Ibig sabihin, as we are looking at the specific treatment, we need to work on an environment where if only that treatment is varying. Okay, so we will be controlling any other factors aside from that treatment. And further, as we are looking at the experimental studies, so Sa ibang, um, sa ibang course na natin tingnan or sa ibang course na natin pag-aralan yung observational studies, let's work on an experiment and further a randomized experiment. So it is an experiment where assignment of units to exposure or treatment groups are manipulated and randomized or controlled by chance. So hindi lang daw basta experiment, we have to randomize the treatments to the experimental units or vice versa. And the goal is to see the effect of the treatment or exposure to the response while controlling other factors. So this is what we have mentioned earlier. Dapat yung treatment lang ang ating consideration. All other factors control. And in terms of causation, randomized experiment presents strongest support to causation. So as we are randomizing the treatments, we are not just um, assigning these treatments to our experimental units. We know that there may be um, we can effectively measure the causation. So, just an illustration to you guys. So, we have um, an illustration here about randomized experiment. So, we have the treatment, the factor or the exposure, so any term. So, they, we will be refer, referring to one, um, so, uh, one term. So, treatment, factor, and exposure will be the same. I know. So, these treatments may have varying levels. So that is what we call as treatment levels or treatment groups. So in this part right here, these treatments will be randomly assigned to our experimental units or our subjects for our studies. And then from these experimental units, we may be able to observe a response variable that is affected by our treatment or it, it will be a measure of the effect of the treatment we are focusing at. So itong responses na ito, ito yung pag-aaralan natin using statistical analysis. And for the advantages of randomized experiment, it allows setup of direct comparison between treatments of interest and then it also minimizes error in the comparison, minimizes any bias in the comparison, and researchers are in control of the experiment. So these are just some of the uh, advantages. And hopefully, we will be um, taking advantage of these advantages. Ano? So maganda na kapag nag experiment tayo, we are doing it randomly. And it is just one of the many principles of experimental designs. So before we head on to the um, discussion on an experimental designs. So let's work on some terms para mamaya mas, um, mas madali na nating maintindihan yung mga terminologies na ito when we look at some examples. First, we have the treatment or the factor. So let's take note guys of these following terms ano, para later on madali natin silang maa-apply. First is the treatment or factor. It is the set of experimental procedures or conditions whose effects are to be measured and compared. Okay, so ito yung pinag-aaralan natin sa ating study. Ito yung tinitignan natin ng effect doon sa ating objects or sa ating subjects sa ating study. This will be assigned to the subjects and then this may vary or this may have different levels. And that was it. that's what we call as the treatment levels. So these are preset quantities of a quantitative factor or treatment or categories of a factor or treatment under study. So, meron ka daw pwedeng iba't ibang levels ng iyong treatment. Pwede siyang either quantitative or qualitative. So, if you are um if you are familiar with the term quantity and quality, so basically quantitative factors are those that have um continuous uh, sorry, uh, quantitative meaning um numbers or uh, it may be discrete or continuous in a sense but the amount or the uh, 
the characteristic of the treatment you are looking at uh, is quantitative in nature. And then for the qualitative variables, this may be um, categories of your treatments or pwedeng magkakaibang types of a certain treatment. Next, we have response variable. So ito yung responses na tinaterm natin kanina. These are characteristics used to measure the effect of a treatment. When we look at the treatment or a factor and we get the treatment levels depending on the study, we can observe a response variable from this um, experiment to which we can measure the effect of the treatment. And the outcomes that we observe after applying a treatment to an experimental unit, and that is what we call the response variable. Later, kung ano yung imi-measure natin sa experiment, that will be our response variable. Okay? So recall guys, meron na tayong tatlo. Treatment or factor, treatment levels, and then the response variable. Up next, we have the experimental unit. Later on, you will see this abbreviated as EU. So, huwag kakalimutan, ano, pag nakakita tayo ng EU later on, this will be about the experimental unit. And this is the unit or group of units to which treatment is applied. Or basically, kung sino yung or kung ano yung pinapag-assignment natin ng treatment sa ating experiment. Sampling unit, on the other hand, or SU. So, pag EU, experimental unit. Pag SU, sampling unit. Iba yung SU sa ating campus. Ano? So, I, I think may mga nakakamiss na sa SU. Pero iba yon Ano? So, para sa mga UPLB participants natin dyan. So, sa sampling unit naman, or SU, this is a unit on which the response variable is observed or measured. Wait lang. Huwag mo na kayong malilito. Ano? In some cases, experimental units are also the sampling units. Ibig sabihin, Yung sampling unit, it is just a, a part of the experimental unit. It may be um, it may be it may be um, units included in experimental units, but if there are no other level aside from the experimental unit, so yun na yung ating sampling unit. So doon na rin tayo kukuha ng ating response variable. So sampling unit or um, SU it occurs when we do subsampling. So, kung familiar kayo sa term na subsampling, it means that you are getting uh, some uh, getting samples from your experimental units, not just one time, but maybe two or more times. So, ibig sabihin, pwede ka daw kumuha ng um, parts ng experimental units mo, and then we will be considering that as subsamples. So, in this case, for this particular webinar, because of uh, time considerations, we will not be looking at subsampling. So only uh, we will only be dealing with the following designs that I have mentioned earlier on the level of without subsamples. So later on, hindi na tayo masyadong makakakita ng SU or sampling units. But for the definition, so let's try to head on an example later on to uh, just to illustrate how some sampling unit works. Ayan. So let's try this one. It is of interest to determine if the RBC count of mouse will differ given three iron supplements in the diet. So three mice were given a diet with a randomly assigned iron supplement. And after four weeks, two blood samples were collected from each mouse and independently analyzed for RBC count. Okay, so let's try to digest each sentence. Ano, para hindi naman tayo na overwhelm bigla, bigla. And also, I highlighted the parts that are very important in this example. So, sabi sa atin, it is, interest to, it is of interest to determine if the RBC count. Ayan. So, dun sa mga, sa mga terms na na-define natin kanina, ano kaya yung RBC count to all? And then, we are looking at the RBC count of mouse. We are testing if there will be an effect on the RBC count given three so iron supplement diets. Ayan, meron na tayong tatlo, ano, RBC count, mouse, and then three iron supplement diets. And then, three mice were given a diet with a randomly assigned iron supplement. So, meron daw tayong tatlo na daga na in sa isang diet randomly. So, take note of the term randomly. And then, after four weeks, two blood samples were collected 
from each mouse and independently analyzed for RBC count. So to illustrate more on that, check natin itong ating illustration sa ating presentation. Ayan. So um, the three Iron supplement diets are uh, mag, mag, meron sila magkakaibang picture ano para ma um ma pag ma, ma, ma characterize natin sila differently. So iron supplement diet 1 or the first diet and then iron supplement diet 2 yung may kutsara ano and then iron supplement diet 3 yung nasa um nasa lalagyanan. So this uh, different diets were randomly assigned to 3 mice each. So, meron tayong tigtatatlo. And then, for each mouse, <laughs> nag-isip ako ng singular at plural, for each mouse, meron tayong i-collect na two blood samples to count for the RBC. And then, after conducting the experiment, we were able to measure the RBC count for each sample of the RBC. B, C. Ayan. So, kita natin dito, per mouse, may tigdadalawa tayong blood sample. Okay. So, let's try to identify, guys. First, what is our treatment? Ayan. So, sabi dito, the treatment or the factor that we are looking at in our experiment is the different iron supplement diets. Okay. So, Ang tinitingnan natin dun sa ating experiment is whether or not these iron supplement diets can have an effect on the RBC count. Sabi na natin, ano, so kung meron tayong iron supplement diet, how many levels of iron supplement diets do we have? So sabi natin meron tayo tayong tatlong categories or tatlong types ng diet. So we have three brands for the iron supplement diets knowing that we, will, we have assigned the three different diets to our um, experimental units. <laughs> Punti ko nang masabi, ano, ano naman yung ating experimental units? Ay, huwag pala muna. Response variable daw muna. So, sabi dito, ang minimeasure natin to um, give us an idea of the effect of the iron supplement diet is the RBC count. Okay. And then, for the experimental unit, we are getting or we are, sorry, we are assigning the treatments or the iron supplement diets to what units? So, sabi natin dito, nagbibigay daw, uh, inassign daw natin randomly yung ating diets sa tatlong mouse. So, meron tayong uh, mouse as the experimental unit. And then, from each mice, we know, from each mouse, we know that we will be getting two blood samples each. So, kita natin sa illustration natin kanina, meron tayong um, dalawang blood sample for, uh, for for each mouse. So, kaya ang ating sampling unit dito sa ating experiment is the two blood samples collected from each mouse. So, as you can see here, guys, in our um, experiment, the experimental units are where the treatments were assigned. Ibig sabihin, yun yung ating mga daga. Pero, dito sa experimental units natin, meron tayong kinuha na samples. Uh, specifically, two samples. So, this will be our sampling unit. So, our blood samples. But for the further experiments dito sa ating webinar, we will not be um, working on experiments with subsampling. Ibig sabihin, wala tayo munang sampling unit. The measurement of the response variable will be on the experimental unit level. Okay? So, other terms that you may have encountered later on. And this one is very important. So please take note of this, guys. Experimental error. Okay? So experimental error, it is the variation in the observed values of the response variable from experimental units treated alike. So experimental error, ito daw yung difference or variation sa values ng response variable ng mga experimental units na tinitreat natin na homogenous or alike. Ibig sabihin, kapag daw gumagawa tayo ng experiments, and in the previous experiment, if we treated all our experimental units, which in this case, yung ating mga daga, 
na homogenous in the characteristics, possibly same weight, same age, same um, species ng daga. And then, if there are variation in these values, so this is what we call as the experimental error. And this, it is the failure of two or four experimental units treated alike to yield the same response. So, ibig sabihin, kapag later, kapag nagtingin tayo sa mga experiments natin, as much as possible, these experimental units should be homogenous. Else, we will be having a, a quite a large experimental error. So, dapat controlled din natin yung um, characteristics ng ating mga experimental Unit. So, uh, they should be treated alike, therefore, they should be alike. Okay? And then, some sources of experimental errors are as follows. Inherent variability of the experimental materials use. So, pwede hindi naman natin talaga makokontrol lahat ng um, characteristic ng isang experimental unit. One particular example is on humans. Madaming, maraming variables or maraming factors na hindi natin kaya i-control. But there are some that we can control. And then, errors in experimentation you know, so is also one kapag nagme-measure na tayo sa ating experiment. Errors in observations and measurements and combined effects of all extraneous uncontrolled factors. So these are some of the sources of our experimental error. So going back to our example one, so dito pa rin yung, ito pa rin yung example natin kanina. So what do you think is the experimental error in this example? So it really consists of all the variation among the three mice given the same iron supplement diet. So maaari na tayo makapag-encounter um, maka ng error kapag yung tatlong mice na inasay natin sa isang treatment ay magkaroon ng variation or difference in terms of the response variable. In that case, yung RBC count. And further, another type of error, which is the sampling error, this is the measure of variation among sampling units within the experimental unit. And it is the failure of two sampling units within an experimental unit to yield the same response. So, ito namang sampling error will um, work on the sampling unit. Okay. So, going back to the example, recall natin what is our sampling unit or SU. These are our RBC, uh, sorry, blood samples. And the sampling error, it consists of the pooled variation among the two blood samples taken from the same mouse. So, magkakaroon na tayo ng error um, kapag yung blood samples na nakuha natin from this, uh, the same mouse will uh, vary. Okay, so this is the sampling error. Okay, recall natin before tayo mag-proceed, yes, what are the terms that we were able to discuss? So para mamaya ay um, smooth na ang ating paggamit dito sa mga terms na ito. So we have the treatment or factor. Again, this is the uh, this is the variable that we are um, assigning to our units in our study, wherein we are trying to measure the effect of this variable. So, treatments can have treatment levels or varying levels, and then we can have a measure of the effect of these treatments, and this is what we call as the response variable. So, tatlo na yon, and then response variable can be measured from either the experimental unit wherein, wherein we are assigning the treatments or the sampling unit wherein the samples that we are taking from our experimental units. And then we further um, discuss about sampling error and experimental error. Okay? So I hope, guys, ito mga um, definitions na ito ay magagamit natin later on sa ating discussion. So without further ado, let's head to let's head on to the experimental design. So kailangan lang natin ng konti ng recap or kailangan lang natin maalala ng kaunti yung mga terminologies na discuss natin para kayang-kaya na natin itong part na ito. First, let's define the experimental design. It involves the assignment of treatments to the experimental units. As what we are discussing earlier, we are assigning our treatments, ayan, sana maalala na natin yung mga terms natin kanina, 
to the experimental units. And it is concerned with planning experiments in order to obtain maximum amount of information from the available resources. So, kailangan daw nating pag-isipan what is the best design or we have to plan accordingly based on our resources and based on our objectives, what is the best design for our experiment. And this is what we will do in this discussion. So first, meron pa ulit tayo mga terms. Ano? So we have the term precision. It is the ability of a measurement to be consistently reproduced. So it is measured by the variance. And to increase the precision of our experiment, we can either increase number of samples, meaning we are increasing the number of units to where we will be assigning our treatments. So in that case, our experimental units. And then skillful grouping of our experimental materials. And then lastly, proper selection of treatment. So all of this can be used or can be um, considered in order to increase the precision of our experiment. Further, we also have the term accuracy. So for the accuracy, this is the closeness of the observed values to the true value. And it is measured by our bias. So it is the average, sorry, it is the average different difference between the average of the values and our true value. So for this discussion, we will not be working on much on this measurements. Ano, so ayoko naman kayong um, bigyan ng bigyan ng mga measurements ng mga computation na yan. So we'll just focus on the interpretation. Kapag sinabi natin um, accuracy, we just have to be close to the true value. And then ways to increase accuracy in terms of our experiment should be refined experimental technique. There should be a refined experimental technique and the proper selection of treatments is also one. Okay, so we have two terms considered here, precision and accuracy. And considering the man dun sa ating experimental design, this is another term that we will be looking at later on. We have the term fixed model. So pag sinabi natin fixed model, all the factors under test are fixed factors. Meaning, yung mga treatments na consider natin to be part of a study are fixed. Hindi sila sinample, hindi sila na-randomized. We pre-selected these factors to be part of our experiment. So, kunwari, say sa level ng, ah, sorry, say sa pag-aaral sa mga uh, fertilizer, we pre-selected the types of fertilizers that we will be um, we will be considering in our study and therefore we will be using a fixed model. And a factor is considered fixed when its levels are selected on purpose. An example would be comparing the scores of, a te of tennis players who were randomly assigned to one of four top brands of racket. So, kuha tayo ng apat na brands. In that case, sabi natin, gusto natin yung mga top brands ng raketa ng tennis. Ano? So in that case, our factors are fixed, which is the brand of racket. So therefore, we are looking at a fixed model. And for this discussion as well, we will be focusing on fixed models, meaning we will be pre-selecting our treatments in our experiment. But let's, uh, let's discuss for brief moment kung ano naman yung another model that we can encounter soon, say in our research or in our study. So we have the random model. And opposite do sa ating fixed model, yung factors under test are random factors. A factor is considered random when the levels of the factors tested are a random sample from a population of levels. So dito naman guys, um, yung factors na kinoconsider natin sa ating study are not pre-selected but randomly selected as well. So an example would be studying the genetic variability of rice varieties developed by IRI from a random sample of IRI bread varieties. So bilang sobrang dami ng mga varieties na yon, and we are interested in the effect of these IRI bread varieties in general, so we have to randomly select a variety or a genetic, 
we have to randomly select um, from this rice varieties. So therefore, we are looking at a random model with the factors randomly selected from the population of levels. So hindi man natin to masyadong madidiscuss dito sa ating um, examples later on. We will also be um, discussing it siguro habang nagdi-discuss tayo later para rin makita natin yung different ano. So lastly, bago tayo mag-proceed sa mismong design structures natin which is on CRD, RCBD and LSD, we will be considering as well the principles of experimental design. So these are very important and para din makakit makakuha tayo ng um um proper level of understanding bago tayo mag-proceed sa mismong design. Minsan kasi kapag gumagawa tayo ng research or meron tayong project, recta dumediretso tayo sa pagde-design. Kaya lang hindi natin naiintindihan ano ba yung principle out of this design. And these are the three main principles of experimental design that we have to always consider in our experiment. These are replication, randomization, and local control. First, um, tudun muna tayo sa replication. Ito naman ay medyo self-explanatory. Okay? So, um, when we say replication, ayan. So, this is the difference among experimental units treated alike. Sorry, there is a difference between experimental units treated alike and this is what we call the experimental error. But one way to manage experimental error is to do replication. We cannot assume, we cannot always assume due to many uncontrollable factors that our experimental units will always be alike. Therefore, we should do replication. And it is a process that allows a treatment to be applied and observed more than once. Ibig sabihin, yung isang treatment, hindi pwede na sa isang experimental unit lang siya i-assign. Dapat daw, we always have a replicate of this combination of one treatment level and one experimental unit. Ibig sabihin sa ating study, dapat isang treatment level, say treatment level A, so marami tayong experimental units or there is a replicate of experimental units wherein this treatment level A will be assigned. In functions of replication, it provides an estimate of the experimental error. It increases the precision of the estimates in our parameter and increases the scope of the experiment. Again, guys, we will not be working much on the estimation of our parameters, but we have to make sure that we understand how replication works. So, maganda na may replicates para hindi, para magkaroon tayo ng management sa ating experimental error. Next, we have randomization. So, in this case, ito naman yung kanina pa natin din i-discuss. Ano? Randomization is... Um, it is a way of assigning our treatments or our factors in our experimental units. Hindi pwede na basta man lang ilagay yung isang treatment sa experimental unit na ito. Dito naman yung treatment na ito. Hindi pwede ganun. Dapat tayo ay may randomization. And um, it is also uh, a way for our experiment to be valid. Ano? So this is done through randomization of a process or a process that ensures the treatments will have equal chance of being assigned to an experimental unit. So hindi pwede na tayo ang magde-decide. There should be a randomization process so that each experimental unit in our experiment will have equal chances of being uh, treated with a certain treatment level. And lastly, we have the local control or error control. So ito na yung medyo, um, uh, lahat naman ng principles ma, ma importante, ano? pero local control is one of the most, um, uh, it is one of, one of the hardest um, principles na kailangan nating mag-abide. Kasi kapag sinabi natin local control, it, invo it involves or incorporates all possible means of minimizing the experimental error and makes the design efficient by making the test more sensitive and powerful. How do we do so? When we say local control, we are, we are uh, 
and of controlling the environment we are also controlling the character uh, we are making sure that the experimental units that we have treated alike are really alike and we have to do some techniques in order to control for this um, principle or in order to have good local control and these are the following use the most appropriate experimental design use proper shape and size of experimental units use of concomitant variable during data analysis refinement of experimental technique and we can also consider grouping blocking or balancing this is to make sure that our experiment will be valid later on in our analysis and uh, some um, very uh, useful techniques in order to um, attain a local control or error control. So ito yung mga madalas nating nakikita. If you are familiar with experimental designs, we have grouping, placing homogeneous EUs into groups and comparing the treatments in each group. Ibig sabihin, um, this homogeneous or uh, experimental units treated alike will be placed in the same group. And then we will be comparing the treatments in each group. Blocking is also one, and that is grouping the experimental units into blocks such that the units within a block are relatively homogeneous. Ibig sabihin, um, we are working on a sort of blocking factor so that we can still um, consider the experimental units to be alike. So they have to be... Um, they have to be experiencing the same kind of um, the same kind but kind of environment in and in, in a specific block. Kaya tayo nag blocking. So dapat sa isang block para paras lang sila ng uh, say characteristic ng environment. And then for the balancing, it is the assignment of treatments to the experimental units to achieve a balanced configuration. So these are just some of the techniques that we are um, that we can be familiar with so that we can try to use this in our experiments in the future. And just to summarize these principles, so let's take a look at this um, video para mas magka-idea tayo ng um, how do these principles work in a randomized trial. So, inaan natin na a randomized trial is a way of testing new treatments without bias. Dr. Brown develops a new cancer treatment that she thinks is as good, if not better, than the current treatment. To find out if it is better, she needs to test it. The new treatment is called Treatment A, and the current treatment, Treatment B. She asks people with cancer to take part in a trial to compare the treatments and gives one group the new treatment and the other the current treatment. To make sure there is no bias, the groups need to be as similar as possible. So, the groups need to have a similar age range of people, they need to have similar general health and to have had similar treatments. If the two groups are too different, it might affect the results. Also, neither Dr. Brown nor the patients can choose which treatment they have. If Dr. Brown chose, she may subconsciously put the sicker patients into the current treatment group and give the new treatment to the fitter people, making the new treatment look as if it worked better when it really didn't. So to prevent bias, Dr. Brown puts the details of those taking part into a special computer program and that randomly allocates them to either treatment A or treatment B. This means that the people taking part in the trial have treatments that are suitable for them and that will help the doctor to find out if the new treatment works better than the current one. Okay, so nakita natin dun sa ating presentation. Ano? So, there is a um, important uh, role 
that we have to consider in our experiment. So our experiment should always be uh, should be randomized, such so that the effect that we are trying to um, to measure in our experiment is validly measured. So ibig sabihin, hindi pwede na mag-assign lang tayo basta ng experimental unit sa isang treatment. We, we may have specific biases. So kanina do si Dr. Brown, ano, so hindi pwede na i-assign niya itong group na ito sa treatment A and hindi rin naman pwede na i-assign niya itong group na ito sa treatment B. So that is how randomization works. And also, nakita natin sa video, dapat daw yung ating units may have the same characteristics. Dapat same age, same health in general. So ito yung mga factors na kailangan natin i-consider para naman ma-control natin yung error. In that case, we have a local control. And lastly, we saw that not only one um, patient or not only one unit is assigned to treatment A, so meron tayong set of units sa isang treatment. Ganun din sa another treatment. And that is what we have for the replication. Okay? So, that is uh, that is just to summarize uh, the principles that we have to consider later on for uh, the designs that we will be looking at. So, uh, for the design or for the structures of the experimental designs, we will be looking at two. Okay? So, in the... Um, ang um, usual na um, iniisip ng ating um, ng mga tao kapag sinabi natin experimental design we are the only looking at the design itself so ito yung mga CRD, RCBT, LST, factorial and so on but in um, talking about experimental design we actually have two parts that we have to look at first is the treatment structure it consists of the set of treatments treatment combinations or populations that the researcher has selected to study or compare. So, ito yung, um, in terms of the treatments, what are the treatments and the treatment levels that we are considering? Are we looking at the combinations of these treatments or simply the treatments at this, as, itself, at this, as itself? And for the design structure naman, this refers to the groupings of the experimental units into homogeneous groups or blocks. So, dito na papasok yung mga designs na alam natin. CRD, RCBD, and LSD. And just to um, give you a brief illustration of how this works, again, experimental design is divided into two parts. We have the design structure and the treatment structure. So, for, for the treatment structure, pwede natin siyang tawagin one way. Ibig sabihin, isang treatment or factor lang yung kinoconsider natin. Factorial and then fractional factorial and nested. So, these kinds of treatment structures will not be considered in this presentation, but um, kailangan kahit pa paano may idea tayo on how treatment structures can go beyond. So, all the objectives, there is a suitable treatment structure that we can consider. For the design structures, these are the following. So, CRD, RCBD, LSD, Split plot, strip plot, strip split, and so on and so forth. So, doon lang muna tayo sa unang tatlo, RC, uh, sorry, CRD, RCBD, and LSD. So, these are the kinds of treatment structure that we can consider. Again, doon muna tayo sa one-way treatment structure, which uh, we're in the treatments consists of levels of a single factor. So, dalawang, um, dalawang, um, terms, yung nakita natin dito, medyo magkaiba yung uh, term na treatment at factor. Pag sinabi natin treatment levels of a single factor, so we are considering only one, say one factor, then, then it, can, it may vary across different levels. So yung example natin kanina, say, in a kind of fertilizer, so there, there may be different levels of for other uh, different levels or different types of fertilizers that we are considering so ang single factor lang natin doon is on the kind of fertilizer and this may have different levels or treatment levels so for the factorial fractional and the uh, factorial arrangement with one or more controls and for the next treatment structure um you can work on this later on siguro kung interested tayo we can also read on these structures for the example of a one-way treatment structure, so comparing the bioethanol yield of three different protocols 
for the production of bioethanol from sweet sorghum. And for the treatments, we are considering three protocols. So, ibig sabihin yung ating, um, yung ating treatment or single factor dito is on the protocol, but we are considering varying levels of bioethanol. Uh, we are considering three levels of the protocol, so kaya meron tayong three treatment levels. And then for the factorial, eto na, meron tayong studying the temperature and concentration of a region on the yield of a chemical reaction. So, meron tayong isang factor, which is the treatment, and we have another factor, which is on the concentration. And therefore, our treatments can be one of the two treatment factors or one of the factors, either treatment or concentration, or the combination of the two factors. Okay, so kaya natin siya tinawag na factorial experiment. But for this um, webinar, we'll only be looking at one-way treatment structure. And then for the design structures, we will be focusing on CRT, RCBD, and Latin square design. Okay, are you ready for our first experimental design structure that we will be looking at? This is the completely randomized design or C. RD. And what other terms is terms this design is actually, it is the simplest design that we can consider in an experiment. So sabi dito, this is the most basic experimental design and it involves allocation of treatment by randomizing the treatments completely over the entire set of the experimental units without re any restriction imposed in the units. Ibig sabihin, when we do CRD, say we have three treatment levels and a set of experimental units, we are not considering anything in randomizing the treatments to the experimental units. Therefore, each experimental unit has an equal ch chance of being assigned to one of the treatment levels. So, ganun din sa ibang mga experimental units in our study. And in this design, or design structure, the factor under test is the only criteria for data classification. So, sabi dito, we should use CRD when the experimental units are homogeneous and there is effective local control. Dun muna tayo sa experimental units being homogeneous. So, hindi daw tayo mag- uh, hindi daw tayo mag-consider ng ibang factors kasi Yung experimental units natin ay hindi naman masyadong nagbabari in terms of the characteristics or in terms of the environment we are, they are in. So therefore, they are homogeneous. And sabi din dito, dapat daw effective yung local control natin para ang factor lang na magiging factor, ang treatment lang na magiging factor sa ating pag-measure later on sa ating experiment will only be on the treatment that we are looking at. Okay? So, for the requirements of CRD, there should be three treatments to, levels to compare. So, kapag nakakita tayo later on ng letter T, this uh, refers to the treatment level. Say, we have three levels of treatment to compare, then we have T equals three. And then, N experimental units must be homogeneous. So, pag sinabi natin N later on sa ating discussion, this refers to the experimental units, which should, which should be homogeneous. At sabi dito, N should be at least 2 times T. Medyo may konti na tayong mat na nakikita sa ating screen. Ano, wag ka bahan, ano, try natin i-explain kung ano itong mga nakita natin na terms dito. Pag sinabi natin N at least 2 T, sabi natin kanina, di ba guys, dapat may replication. Ibig sabihin, sa isang Treatment level, hindi pa din na isa lang experimental unit natin. There should be at least two replicates for each treatment level. Kaya hindi pa din na mag-equal lang yung N, which is the number of EUs, to T, which is the number of treatment levels. Kunwari, sa experiment natin, meron tayong tatlong levels of the treatment, tas tatlo din yung experimental units natin. That is a no-no. Hindi pa din na mag-equal sila. Dapat at least two replicates for each treatment level. And RI replicates are assigned to each level of T. 
Ibig sabihin, kapag nakakita tayo ng R later on, we should just count the number of replicates in each treatment level. So, pag nakita natin si R, this refers to the number of um, experimental units assigned to the same treatment level. For the replication part or R, ano, so, kailangan familiar tayo dun sa letter R. This re refers to the replicates in our treatment. So, pag sinabi daw natin na balance yung ating replicates, ibig sabihin, equal number of replicates for each treatment level. So, sa example natin kanina, say we have three, 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 three treatment levels, tapos nag-assign tayo ng nine experimental units. So, meron tayo kunwaring nine experimental units. So, each um, experimental units will be assigned to the treatment levels. So, kung meron tayong sham na experimental units, if we want our study to be balanced, tig -ta tatlo yung ating treatment levels. So, tatlo for treatment level 1, tatlo for treatment level 2, and tatlo for treatment level 3. But it was, it's always not the case. Ano, pwede rin siyang maging unbalanced. Say, out of the nine experimental units, apat yung nasa treatment 1, dalawa yung nasa treatment 2, ilan pa ang kulang? Tatlo doon sa treatment 3 para mag-9. Ano? So, yun naman yung tinatawag natin na unbalanced design. So, the number of replicates for each treatment level are not equal. Okay. Bago tayo mag-proceed dito sa ating slide na ito, huwag mabibigla. Ano? This is just for presentation. We, don't, we will not be working on much on this, but we'll just try to look at the model para familiar din tayo on how linear modeling works for completely randomized design. And this works such as this. Ano po itong model na ito, ma'am? Wait lang, bago tayo mag-panic. Ano? So, this model is just to illustrate an effect, say, in our experiment, mathematically. So, kailangan lang nating ma-illustrate in a mathematical model how the effects work in our experiment? So, yij equals mu sub i plus epsilon sub ij. Ano-ano yung mga yan? Y is the observed value of the response variable, whatever response variable we are having from a specific treatment level of, uh, from a specific experimental unit given this specific treatment level. In short, this is the response variable. Ito yung measure natin. Mu i is the mean of the treatment of the i at treatment level. So um, this is sort of the value of the response variable of the treatment level we are looking at of a specific treatment level. And epsilon e i sub j, i j represents the error. So since we are only look, looking at samples or replicates, di naman tayo um, nag-work sa isang entire population. So we, we can always we always consider the error associated to our model. We cannot um, we cannot work without error. Ano hindi naman pwede na sa experiment ay perfect yung makukuha nating values. Since meron lang tayong set of replicates in our in our experiment, so there will always be an error in our experiment. So, ano yung nakita natin kanina? This is the means model. We also have the effects model. Magkaiba lang sila ng itsura but they are, um, they are, they have the same use. Um, means model, nag-focus lang siya sa mean ng response variable. But for the effects model, we are looking at the specific effect of each of the treatments under consideration. So, if you can see here, we have yij equals mu. So in this case, mu is the overall mean. And then tau sub i, this refers to the effect of our treatment levels. And of course, we still have the random error. But again, guys, we don't need to work much on this for now. So kung gusto natin mas maging familiar sa modeling or sa means and effects model, so we can also study on this one. So the, the reason I'm presenting this is later on, we will be seeing terms that affects uh, model or means model, but basically they refer to the same thing kapag nag-hypothesis testing na tayo. Okay? So for the effects model, ito ay nakita na natin kanina, we can either work for work on a fixed effects model or a random effects model. And again, guys, this will just be based on the selection of the treatment levels that we are working 
on an experiment. So, ibig sabihin, again, kapag fixed effects model, meron lang tayong kinoconsider na pre-selected treatment levels. But for a random effects model, given that the treatment levels are randomly selected from a population of treatment levels, we can describe the population treatments in terms of the T treatments that we have randomly selected. Pero again, guys, for this discussion, we'll only be looking at fixed FX model. Pero alam natin na kapag gusto natin mag-generalize from the population of treatment levels, then we need to consider the random FX model. So dun muna tayo sa fixed FX model. And how does CRD work for a fixed FX model? Let's try this example. So, an experiment was conducted to determine the effect of the levels. We have 30, 60, and 90 kilograms per hectare of nitrogen on the yield of a variety of corn. Ayan, naka-highlight na yung levels of nitrogen, yield, and then 12 homogeneous plots of 5 times 30 or 5 by 30 meters squared were prepared. Naka-highlight din yung, naka-bold din yung plots. And four plots were randomly assigned to receive a level of nitrogen. So, alam na natin kanina to, no? We first have to define, or we first have to be familiarized with the experiment by, de by defining the terms we need to consider later on in our testing. So, we first have the treatment. We know that we are working on the different levels of nitrogen. So, in that case, our treatment is the amount of nitrogen. And does this have an effect on the yield? So, uh, the experimental units in this case are the plots that we have prepared. So, sabi dyan, dapat homogenous yung plots as possible. So, dapat siguro same soil, same size, um, same nutrient level aside from the nitrogen level we are working on, and then some other factors that we can control. And the response variable is on the yield. So, titignan doon natin later on, kapag itong level ng nitrogen na to yung inassign ko sa plot na ito, uh, hanapin ay i-measure natin yung yield later on and then we can compare. So, for treatment level 30 versus treatment level 60 and 90 and so on. Okay? So, after conducting the experiment, this is the data that we have gathered. So, uh, we have here yield of corn applied with different nitrogen levels. So, sabi kanina, meron tayong three nitrogen levels. We have 30, 60, and 90. And then, our response variable ay ang yield. So, sabi natin, meron tayong tig-aapat na experimental plots for each level of nitrogen. So, as you can see here, 430 Ayan, so meron tayong apat na plots, so meron din tayong apat na measurement ng experimental unit natin. So for, for each plot, may measurement tayo ng yield. So plot 1, this is a, so first plot, second plot, third plot, and so on. Which is assigned with the same treatment level, which is yung ating nitrogen level 30. Okay, so ganun din sa ating second treatment level, meron din tayong apat. So, 4.8, 3.7, and so on. And then, for treatment level 90, meron din tayong apat. So, unang tanong, is this a balanced design? So, lagay nyo dyan sa inyong comment section, is this a balanced design? Meron tayong tiga-apat na plots per treatment level. So, ibig sabihin, equal ang R natin. Ano nga yung R? This is the number of replicates for each treatment level. So, as we can see, for each treatment, we have four replicates Therefore, this is a balanced design. And from this data, okay, so from this data, at alpha equals 0 0.05, okay, by the way, bago tayo mag-proceed dun sa ating test, ano, so ano yung alpha bago muna tayo mag, um, bago tayo mag-test? So alpha is the level of significant set in every study. It depends on the researcher. In that case, our alpha or the level of significance here is 0 0.05. And it is very essential to know the alpha in terms of the test of hypothesis. So, dapat meron tayong sineset na value for the level of significance. So, for this problem, are there significant differences in the mean 
yield among the different nitrogen levels considered. Ano yung gusto nating malaman? Is there a significant difference in the mean yield among the different nitrogen levels considered? So kung titingnan natin um, subjectively yung ating data, check natin. Kapag kinuha ko yung average ng yield sa treatment level 1, which is on 30 um, kilograms per hectare, will the mean of treatment level 1, say, be higher than the treatment level 2's mean or the treatment level 3's mean? So pag tinignan natin ngayon, subjectively lang, parang hirap i-compute ng average kasi may one decimal place. Ano, uh, mamaya na lang. Check na lang natin sa ating output. Which mean will yield the highest value of the mean. Say, for example, we can compute for the mean of treatment level 1, mean of treatment level 2, and mean of treatment level 3. But, to significantly compare for these means, so we can use a scientific test in order to arrive with a significant conclusion. So, to test if there are significant differences in the mean yield among the different nitrogen levels considered, we can work on the hypothesis testing. Ano yung hypothesis testing? This is the first time you've been, you'd been hearing this term. When we say hypothesis testing, we are working on trying to study a claim. A claim wherein we are trying to know if this claim is valid or not. And these are the specific tests that we will be using in order to test for a, a claim or a hypothesis. So first, we have to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So pag sinabing null, so this is um, the statement of equality. So lagi siyang statement of equality. Ano? So um, say some means ng ating different treatment levels kapag nag-construct tayo ng statement or claim that falls under a null hypothesis, so ibig sabihin, lahat ng treatment means natin are the same or equal. So, ganun yung HO or null hypothesis. It is always a statement of equality. And then for the alternative hypothesis, this is another claim that we are um, working on our test. So, if uh, the null hypothesis is not um, supported, then we will be concluding for the alternative hypothesis. So, next is to decide on the level of significance. I have mentioned this before. Dapat sa isang study ay na-decide or nag-set tayo ng level of significance alpha. Next is to select the appropriate test and establish the critical region and then collect the necessary data compute the value of the test statistic from the sample data, and then make the decision. So um, we will be um, considering the steps later on ano, sa pag-test natin ng hypothesis. And then later is we can write the conclusion that we have um, arrived at in our hypothesis testing. So this will be the main focus in our discussion kapag nagtingin tayo ng um, an hypothesis testing say, sa CRD, sa RCBD, and sa LSD. So, ano daw ang una natin gagawin? We first have to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So, first, for stating the null and alternative hypothesis, let's first look at the null hypothesis. Again, this is a statement of equality. And to term... Ito na lang yung isipin natin for now. Ano, when we say the null hypothesis, there are no differences in the mean responses among the treatments. So, statement of equality siya. It's, this is the statement that there is no difference uh, on the mean responses among the treatments. And this will be one of our claims or one of our hypotheses. If we are to write it using the means model, we have here the symbol mu1 equals mu2 equals up to how many mu's we have, depending on the number of treatment levels. So this just means that the means of each treatment are all equal to each other. But if we have a fixed effects model, we are um, using the symbol tau sub i. So tau, tau sub 1, tau sub 2, up to tau sub t is equal to 0, meaning there are no differences among the treatment effects. 
And for the random effects model, though we will not be working on random effects model, this is the hypothesis or the null hypothesis. This is how we construct the null hypothesis. Pero again, guys, basically, all the statements right here are just the same as saying as there are no differences in the mean responses among the treatments. Basta ang HO natin laging statement of equality. Walang difference yung treatment 1, treatment 2, up to treatment N. Okay? And then for the alternative hypothesis naman, at least one of the treatment levels has a different mean. So, um, ito yung another claim that we can be looking at in our test. HO is a statement of equality. HA, on the other hand, is we say that at least one of the treatment levels has a different mean. Okay? So, in this test, pwede daw nating malaman either equal ba silang lahat or at least isa sa kanila ay different. Okay? Pero ba, ma'am, bakit po hindi natin malalaman kung anong treatment level yung different talaga? So, we have another test for that. But for this one, we can only conclude either is there sufficient evidence to say that at least one treatment level is different or are the treatments all equal to each other. For the different um, symbols that we are looking at here, so again, um, lahat naman sila ay, ito lang ang ibig sabihin, ano, at least one treatment level has a different mean. And for our example, so back to our example, how do we construct our treatment uh, sorry, how do we construct our null and alternative hypothesis? So, we have here our HO or our null hypothesis. So, in symbols, that is tau sub i equal to 0. For all i is equal to 1, 2, and 3. Bakit 3? Yung last value natin ng i. i refers to the number of treatment levels. Ano? So, we have 3 treatment levels, 30, 60, and 90. Kaya 3 ang uh, uh, max value ng i natin. And in words, this is just the effect of the, the different nitrogen levels is the same versus our alternative hypothesis, which is saying that at least one tau sub i is not equal to zero, meaning at least one of the nitrogen levels has a different effect. Okay, so again, HO is all treatments are equal versus HA at least one is different. Okay, so for the test procedure, in order, in order to um, test for the HO and HA, we have the test procedure called F-test using one-way analysis of variance. Ito na, medyo um, nakakita na tayo ng term na ANOVA. ANOVA or ANOVA. <laughs> so kapag ang common meme kasi kapag nakita na tayo ng term na ANOVA, para mapapaano ba ka na ka lang talaga ano, sa dami ng test na nakikita mo kapag statistics yung pinag-uusapan. But again, we are taking one statistics at a time. Sabi nga ni Ma'am Shea kanina. Ano? So let's first digest what ANOVA is. ANOVA is an analysis of variance. And the test procedure in order to test for our claims earlier presented is F-test and it is using ANOVA or one-way analysis of variance. For the test statistic, we have here the mean square of the treatment over the mean square of the error term. Pero um, for this webinar, we will not be computing for such. Ano, hindi na natin yan kailangan i-compute dahil we can always use for the p-value in order to decide which of the claims you are going to accept. So for the decision rule, although we have the standard rule reject HO, if the f computed in our test statistic is greater than a particular tabular value from the f table, again, we will not be using the f table in this webinar. We will just be using the decision rule reject HO if p-value is less than or equal to our set level of significance alpha. Again, hindi na natin gagamitin yung ating um, f-table. We will uh, just be focusing on, on this decision rule. And where do we get the p-value? Or ano ba yung p-value? And these are the common um, 
It is actually common, ano kapag ka nagtitingin tayo ng mga statistics or nagpapakonsult tayo, um, lagi tayo nakaka-encounter nakaka ng term na P, value. Um, these are the values that are generated sa ating mga softwares and it can be easily used in order to decide for a step for, a, for testing the hypothesis because all we need to do is to compare this to our set level of significance alpha. And if the p-value is not less than or equal to alpha, we cannot reject our non-hypothesis. Okay? So, um, just to give you a brief a um, uh, brief discussion about ANOVA or analysis of variance. It is used for comparing the means between three or more groups. So, meron daw tayong, in this example, meron tayong three groups. So, meron tayong three treatment levels. We have 30, 60, and 90 for the nitrogen level. And we can use ANOVA in comparing the means of this treatment levels. So it compares the variation of the different group means or in this case different treatment levels means to the variation of the means assuming that all the groups are from the same population. And it results in the ratio of the variability between the groups relative to the variability within the group. So meron do tayong variability within and variability between. So in this example we will be looking at the variability between the treatment levels relative to the variability within the treatment levels. So, in an illustration, this is how ANOVA works. We have the total variation. We term this as the total sum of squares or TSS. No need to um, no need to think more on these terms. I know. So we'll just try to absorb what we can. For the total variation, this is divided into two. We can either have the variation due to the treatment or the treatment sum of squares or TRSS or the variation due to randomization or the error sum of squares. And uh, what we are trying to do in ANOVA is to at the ratio of the two so that we can arrive at the F computed or FC. And if we are to look at our ANOVA table, this is how it would look like. So, meron tayong um, two sources of variations for completely randomized design. We can either be looking at the treatment variation and the error variation. Kanina, variation between the treatments, ito yung treatment na nakikita natin sa ating table. But the variation within the treatment levels, this is the error variation. Um, T is the number of treatments in our in this table. N is the number of sample size, meaning um, how many experimental units are there in total. Treatment sum of squares is the uh, TRSS is the treatment sum of squares. ESS is the error sum of squares, and TSS is the total sum of squares. So. Makalita niya ito lahat when you look at an ANOVA table. And then, this word later lead on to the F statistic, which is, as we can see earlier, this is the ratio between the mean square treatment um, mean square treatment over the mean square error. Again, we, would, we won't be computing this manually. Ano? So, we'll just be looking at uh, a we will just be looking at a software output where we wherein we can easily compare the p value with a certain set level of significance okay so these are the set, the source of variations as mentioned earlier the elements or factors in the experiment which could possibly cause the variation in the response and in crt we can either have the variation between treatments and the variation within but for the degrees of freedom, this is DF, this is the number of values that are free to vary as the parameter is estimated. So this is in terms of the um, freedom in our experiment. So the number of independent pieces of information that went into parameter estimation. So this is just to define some terms, but no need to um, think more on this one. Ano? So let's head on to our example. So again, these are the hypotheses that we are testing. And for the test procedure, again, we will be using F-test using one-way ANOVA. Test statistic is just the ratio between the mean squares, but no need to compute for this. We will be 
looking at the p value so reject ho if the p value is less than or equal to alpha else fail to reject ho okay but wait before we proceed with the test procedure we must know that in using analysis of variance or ANOVA, we have the certain assumptions to satisfy first. So we have here the assumptions that we have to check para naman magamit natin yung analysis of variance and comparing the means of our experiment, of the treatment levels in our experiment. And we first have to check these assumptions before proceeding with the test. So we have the homogeneity of variances of the experimental errors or um, we have we term we also term this as the heteroscedasticity. Now, next assumption is the normality of the distribution of the experimental errors, and then the independence of the experimental errors. And lastly, we have the additivity of the treatment effects and the environmental effects. But for a certain design such as the CRD, we don't need to check for this assumption. But this assumption has to be checked or other designs that we will be looking at later. So, dun lang muna tayo sa tatlong assumption. First off, we have the homogeneity of error variances. So, ganta natin siya i-test. And for the HO and HA, HO is still the uh, statement of equality versus HA, which says that at least one is different. So, sabi natin, we have to satisfy the homogeneity. Ibig sabihin, dapat equal yung ating um, error variances. In that case, when testing for this assumption, dapat ang ating goal ay makapag-fail to reject HO. So, dapat mag-equal yung ating treatment levels para masatisfy natin yung homogeneity of error variances assumption. And for the test procedure, we have some popular tests to consider but for this discussion we will be using the Levin's test and again no need to manually compute for this test ang gagamitin lang natin ay yung decision rule na nakatatak na sa bato ano p value less than or equal to alpha no other decision rule let's try this in our example by the way, guys, this is an R software output. If you're familiar with R, so this is how it would look like in the R output. So, sabi natin, we will just be using for the p-value in order for us to check for this assumption. Ano? So, uh, yung value na naka-box dito, this is already the p-value of the Levin's test. And as we can see, a value or a p-value of point is 059 is, is it greater than or less than alpha? Our alpha here is 0 0.05 and it is relatively greater than alpha. Therefore, we fail to reject our HO. So, sabi natin kanina kapag assumption testing, ang gusto ko ay fail to reject. Ibig sabihin, this satisfies the homogeneity of error variances assumption. Ma'am, ang dami ko pa ba lang kailangan test bago mag-ANOVA? Oo, kailangan muna natin itong ma-check ano, bago tayo mag-proceed with the test. Next, we have the normality of errors. And when we say normality, I hope you are familiar with the term normal distribution. So, sabi dito sa assumption na to, dapat daw yung errors natin ay nagpa-follow ng normal distribution or the bell-shaped distribution, if you are familiar with it. So, HO natin, again, uh, it is the statement that the errors follow the normal distribution versus the errors do not follow the normal distribution. So, so some, some, some familiar tests or popular tests that we can consider, chi-square goodness of fit test, Kolmogorov-Smirnov, and the Wilk-Shapiro. But for this discussion, we'll only be using the Shapiro-Wilk or Wilk-Shapiro test. Again, ang gusto natin ay mag-fail to reject ng HO dahil gusto natin na mag-follow ng normality yung ating errors. So in that case, our goal is again to fail to reject HO. And for this R software output, as we can see, the Shapiro Wilk Normality Test with p-value 0.9062. So para natin i-interpret itong value na ito. Again, P-value is relatively higher than alpha. Therefore, we fail to reject HO. So therefore, again, the normality assumption is satisfied. Okay? So, ganun tayo kapag nag-assumption testing, ang goal lagi natin ay mag-fail to reject 
ratio. For the next assumption, which is on the independence of errors, so this can be checked using Durbin-Watson test, but this can be satisfied through randomization. So as long as our experiment is done using randomization, dapat okay yung randomization process natin, there is high chance that the independence of error is satisfied. But if you can see some, um, say, uh, if there is a uh, kind of a uh, relationship or nakakita kayo ng trend dun sa inyong values, then we can always check using the Durbin-Watson test. But for this discussion, we will be assuming that by randomization, this assumption is satisfied. So na-check na natin ang homogeneity, na-check na natin ang normality. We also assume independence of errors is satisfied. Additivity will not be considered in CRT. Therefore, we can proceed with the test of hypothesis using F-test uh, one-way ANOVA. Going back to our example, ito na yung kanina natin. Ano? So again, just to recall, HO is the effect of the different nitrogen levels is the same versus HA. At least one nitrogen level has a different effect. Test procedure is F-test using ANOVA. The statistic is as follows, but no need to compute for this. We just we'll just use the decision rule, reject HO if P value is less than or equal to alpha. Else fail to reject HO. And say na kapag generate na tayo ng ANOVA table, so no need to manually compute for this. This can be easily generated using software, um, using some statistical softwares. So if you are familiar with SAS, pwede ito sa SAS. Kung meron din tayong STATA or R, R is what I use and I will be presenting this later uh, in this webinar as well. So if you can see in the ANOVA table, so ganito siya i-present. So if we are to use a test statistic approach, we have the F computed 1.78 versus the tabular value 4.26. So our decision rule kapag F test yung uh, test statistic yung gagamitin natin, FC should be greater than F tab. But in that case, in this case, FC is less than F tab. Therefore, we fail to reject HO. And at alpha equals 5%, since we fail to reject HO, therefore, the effect of the different nitrogen levels is the same. But again, we don't need to um, focus here much. We just have to look for the p-value. Again, guys, yung f this can be generated, say, from an f table. Meron din ito sa Excel. Pero a uh, better way or an easy way, easier way to do this is by doing uh, this in softwares para makikita na natin directo yung p value so if you can see here we have the same f value or f computed 1.776 then sa ating manual that is 1.78 but for the p value approach we will just be comparing p value with alpha again reject ho if p value is less than alpha and given the p value of 0.224 which is less than uh, sorry which is greater than 0.05 again we fail to reject HO. Just to uh, make sure, guys, when you use the F computed um, way, dapat pareha siya sa output mo dun sa p-value um, uh, p-value comparison. Ano? So, similar naman ang results natin, we still fail to reject the HO. Meaning, at alpha equals 5%, the effect of the different nitrogen levels is the same. Okay? So, Ibig sabihin, hindi tayo nakakita ng enough evidence to say that there is at least one nitrogen level mean that is different from the rest. Okay? So that is how analysis of variance works for CRB. And to test for the, uh, to test for the uh, hypothesis that either all the means are equal versus at least one is different from the other, then we can use the analysis of variance. So, ganon natin i-interpret yung mga p-values na nakakita natin, say, kapag nag tayo ng ANOVA, at uh, kapag, say, nagpapakonsult siguro tayo sa isang statistician, this is how we interpret the results. So, let's try to look at another example for completely randomized design, or CRD. So, try natin ulit siyang i-apply but let's try to do it in menti.com. Ibig sabihin, parang may 
sasagutan tayo ano so this is just a short quiz about what we have discussed huwag kayong magalala hindi naman to ganun kahirap ano so please go to menti.com and use the code 7563130 hala may pa quiz baka daw pag hindi nasagutan ang quiz ay walang certificate hindi naman ano so let's try to go to menti.com with the code 7563130. So, I hope you can join our menti.com. Sige, nagjo-join pa siguro yung iba. So, please use the code 7563130. So, ayan. So, get ready. Grab your pen, notebook, notepad, sticky notes, and anything you can write on. Ayan. So, ready na? This is just a short quiz, guys. Huwag mag-alala. Kayang-kaya nyo to. Um, we'll just look at another example, and then let's try to answer some questions. Are we ready for this short quiz? At ito ay medyo competitive. Ano? So, kailangan natin magsagot as fast as we can. Uh, mas mataas ang points kapag mas mabilis sumagot. So, uh, let's try our best in answering this question. So, are we ready? I hope um, everyone is ready. Let's try with our first question. So, um, using the, considering the problem, an experiment was conducted to determine the effect of three baking times. We have 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and 40 minutes on the height of bread loaf. So, wala na naka-highlight. Ano? <laughs> Kanina sa example, may naka-highlight. Para madali. Pero tito, try natin. Ano? Nine loaf pans were prepared, each containing equal amounts of dough from a single batch of dough. Each baking time was randomly assigned to three loaf pans. So, try muna natin inotes, inote ito, guys. Ano? So, lagay niyo na yan sa mga notepads niyo or sa mga notebooks niyo kung saan niyo gusto kong ilagay. Or sa utak lang. So, kaya ko na to. Naisip ko na to. Ano? So, again, three baking times, 30, 35, and 40 minutes. And then, height, ang consideration natin. And then, we have loaf pans assigned randomly to each treatment. Okay. Let's try this first question. Are you ready? Ayan na. Kita na natin yung ating mga um, audience. <laughs> Ang dami. Ano? So, ready na ba tayong lahat para dito sa ating first question? Sana ay naaalala ang ating mga na-discuss earlier. Meron tayo currently we have 408 500, ang hirap mag-cope up sa numbers. Ano, we have a total of 497. Uh, mayahabol ba ba? 500. Let's try our first question. Answer fast to get more points. Identify the treatment in the experiment. So, meron tayong option. Loaf pans, baking time, height, or dough. Again, Loaf pants, baking time, height, or dough. Times up! And for our treatment in the experiment, the uh, correct answer is baking time. Congratulations to the 281. Palakpakan naman. Matataas. Ay, uh, at least mataas yung ating correct answer. So, for others who did not get this correctly, so, take note natin that the treatment is baking time. Okay? So, our correct answer is treatment is the baking time. Sana ay mag-move ang ating menti.com. Ayan. So, let's look at our leaderboard. Our first place is 
Erwin. So, very good tayo dyan, pero halos magkakadikit lang. Ano, hindi naman ganun. Ibig sabihin, competitive. <laughs> competitive ang ating mga participants. So, let's try the next question. Yung iba, kayang-kaya niyong taasan si Erwin. Ano, let's, let's try this first, second problem. Um, considering the same problem, um, just to recall the terms that we have in this problem, ano, so baking time, height, loaf, pans, etc. Next question, are you ready? Question number two. Sige, so try natin ulit with our uh, respondents. We are currently at 530. Question number two. Again, answer fast to get more points. Identify the treatment levels in our experiment. So we have the options. First option, 30 minutes, 31 minutes, 32, hanggang, 30, hanggang 40 minutes. Next option, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and 40 minutes. And then third option is low fats. Fourth is high. Ayan. Mas marami nang tumama ngayon dahil tama, alam na natin ang sagot sa first question. So given the treatment is baking time, the treatment levels are pre-specified. 30, 35, and 40. So dun sa ating um, experiment, this is actually a fixed effects um, this is a fixed experiment or fixed effects models is considered since we are pre-selecting the treatment levels. In this case, meron lang tayo 30, 35, at 40. So, hindi pwede yung 30, 31, 32, hanggang 40. Ano? So, um, we are only selecting three levels. So, 30, 35, and 40. Congratulations sa ating 375 correct answers. Nagbago kaya ang ikot ng mundo. Talagang competitive pa rin si Erwin, pero pinakamataas na given our second question. So, umangat na si Jod. Si Jod yung second natin. Jod, Jod. Hindi ko alam. Second question. So, habol tayo. Magkakalapit lang naman yung ating value. Next, item number three. Again, considering the same problem. Oops. Ayan. Item number three. Question number three. Let's try this question. Again, all correct answers give max points and answer as fast as possible. Identify the experimental units in our experiment. Ano nga ulit yung experimental unit na discuss yun kanina? What is the experimental units in our experiment? Low pants, height, baking time, or 30, 35, and 40 minutes. Ay! Parang ang ganda ng distribution, napairit tuloy ako, ano? pero parang ang ganda ng distribution natin. But yes, the correct answer is low pants. Still, marami pa rin naman yung nakakuha, mas marami relative dito. Um, the second option na mas maraming, uh, siguro 117, 101 yung um, difference niya dun sa second uh, highest response. So, our experimental units are the low and for our last question, check muna natin ang leaderboard. May nagbago ba? <laughs> Ayan. So, matataas ang scores natin. Very good tayo dyan. Kaya, ganun din. Ganun pa rin ang ating um, leaderboard. Okay? Next and last question for this quiz. Question number four. Again, answer fast to get more Point. Identify the response variable in the experiment. Again, identify the response variable in the experiment. We have baking time, height, weight, and loaf pan. Let's try. Time's up. We have the response variable as the height of the loaf Fans. So, marami pa rin ang nakakuha ng tamang sagot. Very good tayo dyan, guys. With the final ranking as follows. Parang yung mga kilala ko dito, dito sa ating um, leaderboard. Ano? So, our first place, I see Jod. Uh, second, si Ma'am Raph. And then, Eleni, Haley, Dinos, A.A., Kentan, Jackie, Clarissa, D. I think 
yung iba dito ay hindi nakapagpalit ng pangalan. Ano? But congratulations to our first placer, we have John. So going back to our... Um, to our example, mabilis na mabilis lang before we take our break. Congratulations sa lahat ng mga nakatama. Let's try to look at the data given our experiment. So we have three baking times and we have three loaf pans for each baking time. And if we are to test whether at least one baking time was a different effect at 5% level of significance, we, have, we are doing this the same way before. So still using ANOVA, but first looking at the assumption have the two values greater than alpha. So for the homogeneity, we have 0 0.06. So ibig sabihin, this is satisfied. And for the normality, still we have greater than alpha, p value greater than alpha, that's 0 0.306. Therefore, both assumptions are satisfied. And the independence of error is assumed given randomization. So for the test of hypothesis, these are the null and alternative. Again, null, there are no differences in the means versus HA or alternative, at least one mean is different. Using the same steps, FTS, F statistic, and decision rule, and going back to the ANOVA table, if this is our output, so given the p-value, 0.0147. Ano nga ang decision rule natin? Reject HO if p-value less than alpha. Is this less than alpha? Yes. So since the p-value is 0.0147, which is relatively less than 0 0.05, therefore, we reject HO. And at alpha equals 5%, we have sufficient evidence that at least one baking time has a different effect on the high. Okay, so ibig sabihin, we significantly concluded that at least one mean or one baking time has a different effect on our response variable high. In that case, ma'am, the next question would be, how will I know which one is significantly different? So in that case, we can either do the following comparisons. We can do pairwise comparison or pairwise mean comparison. We are comparing each pair separately. So treatment A versus treatment B, treatment B versus treatment C, and so on. We can also do group comparison or we are comparing say a set of means versus another set of means or one mean versus the other means and so on. And for the trend comparison, if we have an objective to see if there is a trend or if there is a um, relationship or linear relationship or other kinds of relationship, then we can do trend comparison. Okay, so before we have our break, just some thoughts to consider in CRD. Again, guys, when we do CRD, an experimental unit is relatively homogeneous with the others. So kailangan daw as much as possible, similar or treat or alike yung characteristics ng units natin. And in that case, we can use few replicates dahil significantly, I sorry, Dahil relatively homogeneous naman ang treatments natin. And the treatments are assigned to experimental units completely at random. No other considerations in our randomization. But in some cases, in most cases actually, in reality, there is a very difficult chance to find experimental units that are very homogeneous with each other. And the experimental units are markedly heterogeneous with respect to some criteria or classification. And the differences among these units are major sources of experimental error. Pa ka daw, kapag kinread ko na alike or homogeneous ang units ko, ay maging mataas ang error dahil they are not homogeneous in some criteria. So, moreover, the objectives of the study require examining treatments over a broad range of characteristics of experimental units so that results will have a wider scope. And experimental materials must be grouped for administrative or implementation purposes. So given this problem, for the, given these issues, what, our, what is our solution? The peak of a nuisance factor, a factor that probably influences the response variable but is not of interest. In other words, baka gusto ko lang malaman yung effect ng baking time, pero meron palang ibang factors na hindi ko nako-consider. These are called nuisance factors that can have an effect on the height of the loaf. Loaf, <laughs> sorry. And just to answer this, or to consider for this nuisance factor, 
we can do either blocking. So in this case, ito na yung ibang design na pwede natin consider. We have randomized complete block design, flat and square design, or incomplete block design. And or use another statistical technique, which is to use analysis of covariance. But for this discussion, we'll be looking at other blocking designs. So RCBD and Latin square design. But before we do, ito na ang ating promise, a break from your ex. So we will have a 15-minute break. Tama po ba, Ma'am She? So I hope tayo ay medyo mag-relax muna ng kaunti. Medyo marami tayo na-discuss. Ano? So... We will continue this after the break. All right. Thank you so much, Ma'am Dale. Ayan, break po na, muna tayo from our ex. <laughs> okay, so magkaroon lang po muna tayo ng brain break, sabi nga ni Sir Chico kanina, para lang ma-refresh tayo ng kaunti. We can do some stretching or you can drink water. You can also do CR break. And uh, for those who are asking po sa comment section, um, comment section natin if we have a recorded session of these sessions. Yes po, you can always watch the replay ng mga sessions natin on our FB page or on our YouTube channel. And alam nyo po ba, kanina 497 lang yung ating subscribers. Ngayon po, meron na tayong 522 subscribers sa YouTube channel. Ayan. So keep it coming po. Alright, so dahil ang ating mga participants po ay mula Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao. May nakita po ako taga Holo, Sulu. Uh, hello po, watching from Holo, Sulu. From different schools, universities and colleges. Even from different private government and non-government organizations. So kung hindi pa po kayo nakakapunta sa UPLB or kung kayo po ay mga students of UPLB at kung nami-miss nyo na po ang UPLB, Here's a video to inspire us a bit, to reminisce a bit. Let's watch it together. A center of knowledge, innovation, history, culture, and biodiversity. This is the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. UPLB found its home at the foot of the legendary Mount Makiling in Los Banos Laguna, a short distance from Laguna de Bay, the country's largest lake. It has its beginnings in 1909 as the UP College of Agriculture, a tent school for a handful of students. A year after, the Forest School, or what was to become the College of Forestry, also set up its home in Los Banos. In 1972, the UP College of Agriculture and the College of Forestry that had by then become renowned institutions were granted full autonomy as the University of the Philippines Los Banos. Instruction, research, and extension in agriculture and forestry in the country took root and flourished in UPLB. Through its strength in these two fields, UPLB established niches in various areas biotechnology, engineering, veterinary medicine, natural resources conservation, environmental science and management, human ecology, food science, economics and management, public affairs, and development communication. It drew its strength in the arts and other fields of science from harnessing its expertise and human resource in the biological, physical, and social sciences. Today, UPLB degree programs continue to dominate over its counterparts. Over the years, UPLB has developed graduate programs that continue to attract students far and wide, including collaborative programs with international universities in food security, biodiversity conservation, and development. To make graduate programs more accessible to professionals, UPLB offers them off-campus. Recently, UPLB established the UP Professional School for Agriculture and the Environment in Mindanao, the country's food basket, in order to help build the knowledge capital that the country needs to attain food security. Instruction in UPLB is enhanced by a strong and vigorous engagement in research and public service that enables it to produce knowledge and generate technologies and innovations that promote sustainable living 
making it a strong force in the war against hunger and poverty in the country. Extension and public service are the mechanisms by which UPLB brings this knowledge and technologies to the people, as well as for it to know what they need and to help shape policies in the country. UPLB's reputation as a graduate and research university was formed through the continuous aspiration for excellence and the mutual reinforcement between instruction, research, and public service and extension. It brings in partnerships with local and international universities and provides mobility to faculty members, researchers and scientists, and students and enhances their competitiveness. Instruction, research, and extension and public service in UBLB reflect the dynamism, honor, and excellence that its forebears set as a standard for its leaders to aspire for. This and an enabling environment for creativity and innovation among its people make UPLB a globally competitive research and graduate university that contribute to national development. All right, so yan po ang UP Los Banyos. Talaga ang kung kayo po ay mga students namin, siguro na miss niyo na po ano ang ang UP Los Banyos. Shout out, oh, shout out talaga. Shout out kay Miss Annie Obrar, missing UPLB din daw po. She is also a student and nagpapasalamat din siya sa ating webinar today. So bigyan lang natin ng counting break yung ating speaker no kasi straight two hours talaga siyang nag nag-speak kanina but later on ayan pupunta tayo sa second part ng ating session. All right, so for now, let's now have an icebreaker. May we kindly direct your attention again to menti.com. Ayan ha, nakailang menti na kayo. Expert na expert na talaga tayo. Use the code 3089408 and there are Two questions there po. Let me also post the link sa ating FB Live para po makasunod yung ating mga nanonood sa FB Live. Alright? Also, nakapin na rin po siya. Pinned. Tama ba? Pinned. <laughs> para po makita nyo po siya. Alright? So, let me also share my screen para makita po natin yung live results ng ating menti.com. Alright. Let me check. Okay. Ayan, so we already have 21 people answering our menti.com. The first question is, which one are you? Are you an early bird or a night owl? Alin ka kaya dyan? So ang mga pagpipilian po, early bird, night owl, tapos both, tapos neither. I'm just tired. Okay, if you are a follower po ng aming FB page, naitanong na po namin yan last Saturday at talaga namang iba-iba ang reaction ng ating mga uh, followers. Alright? So, marami sa atin ay so far, madami ang night owl. 63. At tumahabol ang both. Okay? Alin ba ako dyan? Actually, both. <laughs> both kapag ka may hinahabol na series ng k-drama Chinese drama. Both. Kasi inaabot na ng madaling araw. Yan talaga mga k-drama na yan. Alright, so we have 275 na nag answer Alin ka dyan? Early bird or night owl? Naiingit po ako sa lahat ng mga early birds. Yung husband ko po early bird yun talaga. Kahit na late na siya natulog, maaga pa rin nagigising. Kasi yun na talaga yung system niya or yung body clock niya. Pag ako po kasi na, na late ng tulog, late din nagigising. So most likely parang night owl. So parang boss. Pag may kailangan lang tapusin, ayan aabuti ng madaling araw. Alright. So, paabuti lang natin siguro ng 400 kung kaya. 351. So, keep it coming. You can see on our screen talagang madami sa atin ang night owl. Mga talagang panggabi, ano? Gising sa gabi. Buhay na buhay ang dugo sa gabi. Pero for this session, talagang gumising kayo ng maaga, right? Wow. That's great. Okay. 367. Is that it? 368? 369 or 370. All right. Thank you so much for answering. Now, let's move on to the next question. Sige, galaw tayo, menti. Ayan. <laughs> Ang second question natin ay, in this or in these challenging times, where do you get inspiration and motivation from? Sige nga. 
kasi talagang uh, ang panahon natin sadyang mahirap ano lalo na yung mga nag-online classes yung mga professors natin and even yung mga nag-work so in this challenging times saan ka kumukuha ng inspirasyon at uh, motivation motivation ayan. it could be one word two words it could be a person it could be an event ayan sige nga parang natahimik yung ating menti.com <laughs> wala sumasagot Uh, saan ba kayo kumukuha ng inspirasyon at motivasyon Ayan. sa ating mga panahon ngayon? Okay? Habang nagiintay tayo ng inyong mga sagot, parang natahimik sila, no? Sharing is paused. Uh, okay. Resume share. Check. Are you seeing our screen? Nasa screen pa ba siya? Okay. Let me just check. Nasa screen pa, pa rin naman siya, no? Tama ba? Oo, nasa screen pa rin siya, pero walang sumasagot. Mahirap ba yung question? Medyo mahirap ba? O sige, shoutout na lang po muna tayo sa ating mga nanonood ngayon sa Facebook Live. Nandyan pa rin po ba kayo? Nandyan pa ba? Naghang. Naghang po. Naghang ba? Let me check. Uh, andun pa rin naman siya. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Let me see. Let me just reload it para makita natin lahat. Kasi hindi siya nag-appear sa akin. Somehow may ano tayo, no? Medyo slow yung internet connection. A lot of our participants ay nagsasabi na medyo slow yung internet connection. Kaya they're asking if there is a recorded session para sa session natin today. So please... Uh, don't worry, it will be uploaded again sa ating YouTube channel kung naka-mobile data, medyo magaan-gaan. And also, you can always go back to our Facebook page. Hanapin nyo lamang po yung UPLB Learning Resource Center para makita nyo po yung ating mga previous uh, Facebook uh, live videos. Nandyan po yan lahat. Ayan, somehow nag, ayan, nag-load yung aking screen. Pero sige, shout out lang muna tayo sa ating mga nakikinig sa FB Live. Marami po tayong Uh, nanonood from Zambales. May nakira- nakita rin po ako taga Zamboanga. MSU. Oo. Not working. Slides are not changing in Menti. Okay. Oo nga, no? Pero loading pa rin siya sa akin. Naglo-load pa rin sa screen. Okay. Sa... Mga nagtatanong po hanggang anong oras to po ang ating webinar. Actually, ito po ay designed for three hours. So, kaya medyo mag-break lang po tayo ng kaunti. Pwede pong tumayo ng kaunti. Pwede mag-stretching kasi huwag daw po tayong masyadong um, palaging nakaupo kasi magkakaroon naman tayo ng problema sa back. Okay. So, I'm seeing here may mga nag-answer po sa ating FB Live. So, pwede rin po ninyong sabihin yung inyong Um, answer sa ating FB Live. I-comment down nyo lang po yan sa ating comment section. Nakalagay po ang kanyang inspiration ay family. Tama ba? Yan. Family daw po ang kanyang inspiration. Meron pa ba? Not moving po ang slide. Siguro i-end ko na lang to. Doon na lang tayo sumagot sa ating menti.com. Alright? Okay. Proceed? Let's proceed na. <laughs> Sige. Alright, thank you so much for answering our menti.com. Let us now uh, proceed to the second part of our session. Let us now uh, welcome back our professor, our speaker for our session to the Zoom space. Ma'am Dale, you may now also have the Zoom space again. Ayan. Thank you po, Ma'am She. And... Welcome back to the young. <laughs> Welcome back to everyone. So, proceed na tayo ulit for the next part of our webinar. And uh, now we will talk about our next design, considering blocking. So, kanina ang um, question in mind bago tayo nag-break is, what if there are some other other factors 
course that not is really of interest to us, to us, but is affecting or sort of having an effect on the response variable that we are looking at. So, ibig sabihin, instead na ang um, instead na ang main effect na nakaka-apekto dun sa response variable na tinitingnan natin is only or solely from the treatments that we are working on, there are other factors na kailangan natin makonsider and kailangan din natin makontrol in order for these factors to not have an effect on our response variable. And one way to control for these factors, whether known or unknown, is um, can or can be considered in randomized complete block design or RCBD. So without further ado, let's head on to RCBD. Okay, so in a randomized complete block design, Nina, meron lang tayong completely randomized design or CRD or in the treatments are uh, randomly assigned in our experimental units without any other consideration. Ibig sabihin, lahat sila ay may equal chances of being allocated to a specific experimental unit. But for the randomized complete block design, we have a blocking factor or we have a factor that we are trying to control in terms of blocking. So it assumes a single gradient running across experimental Units. Ibig sabihin, possible that in a set of my experimental units, some of them are experiencing this part of the gradient, some of them are experiencing the other part of the gradient. Ibig sabihin, hindi daw homogeneous or hindi same um, environment ang nabibilangan nito mga experimental units na ito. So in that case, we are considering this single gradient running across our experimental units. And this experimental units to be able to control for the gradient or for the factor, we can assign the, assign these units in a block or in to R blocks. So, pag nakita natin ngayon yung letter R, this refers to the number of blocks we are considering in our experiment, such that it's such that the units within the blocks or are homogeneous. Ibig sabihin, kaya natin ginagawa yung blocking para makontrol natin yung effect ng gradient na kinoconsider natin or yung factor na kinoconsider natin. The blocks are of equal sizes, each of which contains all the T treatments. Dapat daw sa isang block, lahat ng treatments natin ay present. Say, so, for block 1, so kung meron tayong 3 treatment levels, dapat may tatlong 3 may tatlong, three, may tatlong treatment levels sa, sa loob ng block na iyon. So, the variability among the blocks is taken out of the experimental error, thereby improving the precision of the experiment. So, we are trying to control the variability among the blocks. So, para hindi siya magkaroon ng, um, para hindi siya makadagdag dun sa experimental error ng ating experiment. So, in that case, we are using the blocks the blocks in order to control for the other factors that are not um, that are somehow affecting our response variable but should not be affecting our response variable. So some considerations in blocking. Number one, protection of the source of variability to be used as the basis for blocking. So kailangan nating um, makapag-decide in an experiment what will be our blocking variable. So selection of the block shape and orientation, this will depend on the gradient of our factor under consideration of our block variable or blocking variable. And the experimental units should be grouped into blocks such that the variability within each block is minimized while the variability among the blocks are is maximized. So, tinatry natin in a way, igrupo ulit yung mga treatments natin in a block such that yung um, magiging uh, magiging state nila sa isang block ay pare-parehas na. Sa so, isang gradient, pare-parehas na yung um, pare-parehas na yung characteristics nila. And then sa other block, Naman, um, it is significantly different from the other uh, block that we have considered. Kaya kapag within the blocks, minimize natin yung variability while we are maximizing the variability among the blocks. So let's try this example. So check natin if 
um, ano yung magbabago in the analysis or the test of hypothesis if we have a randomized complete block design. So, recall lang natin guys ulit, ano, bago tayo mag-proceed sa example na ito, we do blocking in order to control for other factors affecting our response variable to be able to get the effect of only the treatments that we are looking at in our study. So, try natin dito sa example na ito. In a field trial, an agriculturist wanted to compare the yield of four cultivars A, B, C, and D of sugar beet. So, naka-highlight or naka-bold na yan. Ano, he intend to divide the field which is known to have varying levels of nitrogen from low at the west end and high at the east end. Ayun na, may lumabas na tayo ng another factor which is varying levels of nitrogen into 12 plots. So, naka-bold din yung 12 plots. So, for each plot, the same number of seeds will be sowed into, onto four furrows with equal depths. So in this part, ina-explain natin yung homogeneity dapat ng um, ating experimental units. Ano? Then, the yield will be measured after 80 days. Recommend an appropriate layout for this experiment. So as we can see, we have a treatment. So we are comparing the yield for the four cultivars of sugar beet, we have A, B, C, and D on the yield. Kaya lang, meron daw tayong other factor which may have an effect on the yield, which is on the varying levels of nitrogen. At alam natin na yung gradient goes from low to the, at the west end to high at the east end. Ibig sabihin, mababa yung level of nitrogen sa west end ng say, um, farm. Tapos, pataas daw siya ng pataas pag pumupunta ka sa east end. So, yun yung ating blocking factor. We will try to consider this factor in order to um, minimize the experimental error para ang makikita lang natin sa yield will be about or will be from the effect of the four cultivars of our uh, sugar beet. So in this case, treatments are four cultivars of our sugar beet and levels are A, B, C, D. Therefore, we have four levels of the treatments. Experimental units are the plots. Sampling unit, wala muna tayong sampling unit. Only on the experimental units level, yung ating um, pag-measure ng response variable, which is on the yield. And then, is blocking needed. Kailangan ba natin ng blocking? So, nasabi natin kanina na Meron daw tayong varying levels of nitrogen across the farm. So meron tayong low level to high level of nitrogen from west to east end, respectively. Therefore, we should be looking at a blocking factor, which is the levels of nitrogen. So pwede natin tong i-consider na low and high, pero pwede rin namang low and then moderate sa gitna and then high doon sa uh, uh, sa east end ng ating farm. So, low sa west end, moderate sa gitna, and then high sa east end ng ating um, farm. So, for the initial layout, this can work such as this one. So, kita natin dito, may, meron tayong um, say, dito sa ating illustration, say, the west end is on the side Alam natin na uh, the lev that the level of nitrogen is low on the west end and then habang papunta tayo sa east end tumataas daw yung level of nitrogen. Ang pangit ng linya, wag na nating ilagay ano. So, ang pwede nating gawin is to work on blocks wherein for each block meron tayong apat na experimental units, one for each treatment. So, recall natin dapat daw sa bawat block ay kumpleto ang treatment levels natin. Kaya meron tayong apat na red blocks. This refers to the number of experimental units. So, the black box naman, this is our block. Or for this first block, we have the low block or the block one corresponds to the low block or low level of nitrogen block. And then the second block or block two, this is the moderate level of nitrogen and then lastly, for the third block or block three, this is the high level of nitrogen. So, bakit ulit natin ginawa yung blocking in this case? 
to consider for the effect of the increasing level of nitrogen. So in that case, kapag nagrupo na natin itong apat na treatment sa isang block, alam na natin that the, these treatments are receiving the same level of nitrogen. Dito din sa block 2, para lahat sila merong moderate level of nitrogen. And lastly, for block 3, this receives the high level of nitrogen. And for the randomization process, say, na-randomize na natin uh, sa isang block, meron tayong apat na treatment. So, dapat per treat, itong mga treatments na to ay randomly allocated dito sa ating mga, um, dito sa ating buong farm or dun sa ating buong block. So, uh, say this is our final layout under uh, after randomization. Say as you can see here for each block, meron tayong kompletong set ng treatment levels natin. And then um, same is true for the second block and then the third block. So what do we do now? Uh, we can now proceed with the data after conducting the experiment. Following data were Na yung daming values. Ano to, ma'am? Wait lang. Kanina, ano lang to? Simple 2 by 2. Ano ka hindi? 2 by 3. Depende pala sa dami ng treatments natin. Pero dito, ayan, meron na tayo uh, for our rows, we have the treatment levels, cultivars A, B, C, and D. And then, for the uh, blocks, ito yung ating columns. We have 1 for low, 2 for moderate, and 3 for high. So the values inside the table, these are the values of the response variable yield. So ibig sabihin for cultivar A under block 1 low, we can we observe the value 48.1 and so on and so forth. So meron na tayo dito mga cultivar totals which means these are the treatment totals and for the block totals meron din dito sa baba. So tinota lang natin to for the sake of presentation but for the data Alam natin that this data inside the table, this this corresponds to the response variable we measured, given the block and the treatment level we are considering. So, try naman natin check or try din natin mag uh, hmm palitan mo na natin yan, isin mo na natin lahat to. So masama pala yun. ano? <laughs> so after um getting the data after doing the um, after doing the experiment so agriculturists wanted to determine whether at least one cultivar produces different mean yield he also wanted to know if blocking is effective so conduct the necessary test at 3% level of significance first test na kailangan nating consider is the usual, are there significant difference or if is at least one treatment level different from the others? So, ito rin yung kinawa natin kanina sa CRD. Meron bang significant difference yung isa sa mga treatment levels natin with the others? But, since we are doing RCBD, we also need to know if the blocking we have conducted is effective. Pag sinabi natin effective, ibig sabihin, we successfully um, we successfully controlled for the effect of the uh, increasing level of nitrogen in terms of blocking. So how do we do this test? Still, we are using the ANOVA or analysis of variance. Balita ko, marami daw natawa kanila dun sa, uh, sa joke natin on ANOVA. Though hindi ko nakakita yung comments, ano, pero um, siguro uh, another fun way to work on ANOVA is um, syempre, alam naman natin na medyo kailangan natin pasayahin yung mga sarili natin kapag ganito mga usapan, medyo mahirap. Pero kapag ginawa daw natin in a fun way, it will be better. So, for the test procedure in RCBD, we, we still use ANOVA. But given the assumptions earlier, kanina hindi natin kailangan i-test yung additivity of treatment effects and environmental effects. But for RCBD, kailangan na natin ito i-check. So, along with the other assumptions na nakita na natin kanina sa CRD. Again, homogeneity, normality, and independence of experimental errors. So, first, tingnan na natin yung bagong test assumption na kailangan natin tingnan. Additivity of effects. The treatment and the environmental effects do not interact. So, they should not be interacting with each other. And if there is no additivity, the effects of treatments across blocks are not uniform and the effects of blocks across treatments are also not uniform. 
So to be able to test for the additivity of effects, we have the two keys test for non-additivity. This is one, but there are also some other tests we can use. And for the um, HO and HA, again, assumption testing ito, ano? so laging ang gusto natin is to fail to reject HO. So kailangan ng i-accept natin dito is that the treatment and block effects are additive. Okay? Still, the decision rule ang nakataga na sa bato, reject HO if p-value less than alpha, otherwise fail to reject HO. For the homogeneity, ganito pa rin to, kagaya nung kanina, but we are to test for the homogeneity of error variances among treatments and then among blocks. So, dalawa na. Kanina, among treatments lang sa CRD. Dito sa ating RCBD, we also need to test for homogeneity among the blocks. Okay? And then, for the normality of errors, still same kanina sa ginawa natin. For the residuals or the errors, so, again, fail to reject ang gusto natin dito. Looking at the assumptions in our example, ayan, Ganito na yung usual na makikita ninyo kung say nagpa-consult kayo sa statistician. Naka-laid out na sila sa isang table. Lahat ng assumptions na kailangan i-test. Anong test ang ginamit? Um, computed p-value and is this assumption satisfied or not? So, try natin for the Shapiro width. The computed p-value is 0.654. Ano nga ulit? Reject or fail to reject dapat given assumption testing. Dapat nagpa-follow ng normality which is under the null hypothesis. Therefore, we should fail to reject. And given the p-value, which is relatively high, syempre, mataas nga dapat talaga siya. 0.654 compared to what is our alpha in this example, that's 0 0.03. So therefore, the normality assumption is satisfied. Also for the Levin's test, we did, uh, we did the, the homogeneity test among treatments and among blocks. Both are relatively greater than, though muntik yung treatment, ano, 0.03016. Pero mataas pa rin siya sa 0 0.03. Therefore, this is also satisfied. For the block p-value, 0.4548 also satisfied. And for the two kiss test for non-additivity or for the additivity of effects assumption, the p-value is 0 0.1403. Also, this is satisfied. Independence of errors, again, assume satisfied given randomization process. So, for the ANOVA, Nina, nakakita tayo ng ANOVA table for CRD. And how do we interpret this table? Ganun din for ANOVA for RCBD. Meron lang tayo na dagdag na source of variation. Kanina sa CRD, we have due to treatment and due to experimental unit or due to experimental error. Pag sa RCBD, meron na tayo due to blocking factor. Napataas ata yung pag ko. So kapag... RCBD, another source of variation is on the blocking factor. And this is how our ANOVA table looks like. If we are to manually compute for this, which we will not do in this discussion, then to yung makikita nating table. And also the same is true kapag nag-software output tayo, madadagtagan lang to ng P value. So for the test of hypothesis, given our test procedure, which is F-test, still F-test using ANOVA, so these are the HO and HA, um, uh, respectively, for each type of model. So for fixed effects and for random effects model. Test statistic is as follows. So for the test of, the test of hypothesis, guys, we can do this by um, looking at the treatment means, meaning um, usual, kagaya nung ginagawa natin kanina sa, R sa CRD, we are looking if one or at least one treatment mean is significantly different from the other means. So, ito yung tinatest natin for this um, test. But, we can also look for the block means. Or, this is the test of hypothesis for blocking. So, para naman malaman natin, is the blocking strategy effective or not? So, in that case, we have the following hypothesis. For HO, there are no differences in the mean response among the blocks. And for, um, in other words, blocking strategy is not effective versus there are differences in the mean response among the blocks, meaning blocking strategy is effective. Okay, so in symbols, this works as follows. For fixing the random effects model and the following steps are given. 
fellow. Again, no need to manually compute. Let's just look at the p-value result. So going back to our example, after gathering the necessary data, the agriculturist wanted to determine if at least one cultivar produces different mean yield, and he also, he also wanted to know if blocking is effective at 3% level of significance. So all of these questions can be answered using the test, uh, the F test using one way ANOVA and using and knowing that the assumptions are satisfied, nakita natin kanina na layout natin sa table, we can now proceed with the analysis of area. And this is how this would look like. So, nakita natin kanina, meron tayong sources of variation due to treatment, due to blocking, and due to experimental unit. So, ganito rin siya pag tinignan natin sa ANOVA table kapag RCBD. For the source of variation of blocks, ito yon. So, SB uh, or source of variation for block. Cultivar, this is our treatments. And then for the error experimental unit, so this is our error term. And given the computed F computed values, given the computed F statistics and the corresponding P-value, so kita natin yung P-value for the block, 0 0.026, and for the treatment, that's 0 0.012. So kailangan lang, natin, kailangan lang natin malaman or maintindihan which of, the, which of these P-values will we use for the test of treatment means and for the test of blocking. So dun muna tayo sa treatment means, and kita natin sa table na ito, the P-value for the treatment means is under this um, row, so do sa cultivar, Cultivar is our treatment um, treatment or the factor. So we have a p-value 0.012. So highlight natin itong value na ito, which is 0.012. So if we are to conduct our test of hypothesis, so looking at our result, p-value is 0.012. Alalahanin natin yon. So for the test of hypothesis for the treatment effects, to be able to answer the question that if at least one mean is significantly different from the rest, so we have this test. So again, HO is there are no differences. HA is at least one mean is different. So for the test statistic, same pa rin yan, decision rule, p-value less than alpha. And kita natin from the output, the p-value 0.012 is less than alpha, which is 0 0.03. Therefore, we reject. HO. And at alpha equals 0.3% or alpha equals 3%, we have evidence or sufficient evidence to say that at least one cultivar mean has a different mean yield from the other treatment levels. Next, we can also test for the blocking. Is blocking effective? Tama ba na nag pa tayo ng blocks um, given the level of nitrogen? So HO is blocking is not effective. HA is blocking is effective. So, p-value naman natin given the ANOVA table results is 0 0.026. Therefore, we also reject HO. So, given alpha equals 3%, we have enough evidence again to say that at least one block has a different mean yield. Therefore, we can say that the blocking strategy is effective. Okay, so um, these are so these are the tests we can check or we can um, analyze. So if we have a design which is RCBD, and for the relative efficiency of our um, uh, our design over CRD, so again CRD is the simplest model. So if we want to know if we did. Um, correctly use RCBD instead of CRD, we can have a measure of efficiency, which is uh, RE or relative efficiency of RCBD over CRD. And this is computed as follows. Di naman natin to kailangan ay manual na ano. So we just have, you know, given the value of RE equal to this value, how do we know if it is better or if CRD is better? So sabi dito, given RE greater than 100%, this implies that RCBD is better than CRD. Ibig sabihin, tama na nag-conduct tayo ng RCBD. But if the relative efficiency is less than zero, therefore, CRD is better with the same number of replications. So let's try using it in our example. 
So given a value of, ayan, nag-compute compute tayo, kunwari, ano, so the values from our ANOVA table, less as to an RE or relative efficiency value of 211.07%. As an interpretation, there is a gain in efficiency in using RCBD over CRD with the same number of replicates. RCBD is 111.07% more efficient over CRD with the same number of replication. So, ibig sabihin, tama or efficient na nags-RCBD tayo over CRD. And to be equally efficient with RCBD, so kung mag-CRD daw tayo, it would require 7 replicates for each treatment. Meaning, saan galing yung 2.11? This is the, val the value of the relative effic of the efficiency without uh, multiplying it to uh, 100. So, multiplied by replicates we use in this experiment, which is 3. So, giving us with a value of 7 replicates per treatment level. Whew. Okay. Ayan. So, that is all for RCBD. Um, there are many other things we can do, but for the time consideration, ano, so tingin lang tayo ng konting parts for each design structure kung ano yung um, most important, I, I think most important kapag nagkakonduct tayo ng research experiments just as uh, that will make use of this design structure. But to help us keep going, last na to, I, uh, for LSD, we will have Latin Square Design, but before that, um, to keep us motivated and to keep us going, I would like to share this video to you guys. This is about an experiment and how experiments is um, relatively important in our daily lives. Kung meron man tayong gustong malaman or meron, na, meron man tayong gustong um, ma-find out given some um, factors that we know might have an effect on a response variable. So let's try to watch this video. Ayan. So that is a kind of a motivational video, not re not really um, related to what we are discussing, but it is about a social experiment, still an experiment to be able to know 
kung ano ba ang pipiliin ng isang normal na individual, ano? Is it the easy way or the fun way? And based on some experiments such as this, I don't know if you're familiar with this experiment. This is what they call the stair, the, the piano stairs experiment, wherein they noticed that um, there are almost low to no um, individuals uh, that are using the stairs compared to the escalator. So, ang ginawa nila, nag-experiment sila, what if we do something fun, fun with the stairs para ma, para ma gamit siya. So, they tried to put uh, uh, some electric something dun sa mga hagdanan para kapag hinapakan ay it will produce a sound similar to a piano. So, ang ginawa nila is, ginawa nilang mukhang piano yung stairs or um, mag-work as a piano. So, habang naglalakad ka doon sa stairs ay makakarinig ka ng tugtog. So, kita natin from that social experiment that um, before that there are no people using the stairs. So, after making something fun out of this stairs, so some or more people use the fun way instead of the easy way. So, that is um, that is concluded or generalized using an experiment. So, marami pang ibang experiment about that. They call it the fun theory. So, kung gusto mo daw, um, gusto mo daw matutunan or gusto mo daw gawin ng isang bagay, you should make or you should um, see the fun in doing it. So, kaya ganun din dito sa ating discussion. If you are working on this or if you are listening to this discussion but you are not finding it um, fun or kahit pa paano ay um, kumbaga um, nandito ka para matuto pero uh, hindi mo sure kung masaya ang matuto pero um, I would just recommend you guys if you want to learn something um, look for the fun of it. So hanap tayo ng paraan para ma-enjoy natin ang isang bagay. And ganun din dito, I'm trying my best to uh, make this learning fun and um, effective for us all. So I hope that is motivational as I thought it would be. For the last topic to consider in our um, webinar, this is on Latin Square Design or LSD. So um, what is the difference between LSD and RCBD? Uh, uh, when we say Latin square design, we are also still looking for a blocking factor or uh, a, a nuisance factor that we have to control in order for these factors to not affect our uh, response variable. But for a Latin square design, instead of a single gradient, we are looking at two gradients by using two-dimensional blocking of our experimental units. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka lang basta tumitingin sa isang gradient of a single block or a single factor. We are also looking at another gradient, kaya siya nagiging Latin square design. You have a factor for the column, for the for the column, and then you have another factor for the row. And these are referred to as the row and column classification. So like RCVD, the blocks in LSD must be complete blocks. Ibig sabihin, sa bawat block, meron tayong kompletong set ng ating statements. And it is used when the experimental units can be grouped according to two sources of variation, such as the variation due to each source are eliminated from the experimental error. So, use for a small number of treatments. Bakit? Kasi kapag Latin square, yung blocks natin or the levels of the blocks for each of the classification, either row or column, must be equal. Kaya siya square. Ano? So, dapat um, perfect square ang ating block. So, use for a number, a small number of treatments. So, kung ilan kasi yung number of treatments natin, yan din ang magiging number of rows and columns sa ating experiment. So, the main restriction of LCD, LSD is that the number of rows, or R, and number of columns, or C, and the number of treatments, T, must be the same. So, ganun siya. Kaya siya square design. Kaya, it only works for a small number of treatments kasi the more treatment or treatment levels we have, uh, the more rows and column classification we have, the more experimental units we need for our experiment. So an experimental unit should belong to one of the row classifications and to one of the column classifications. And each treatment must be applied once to each row and once to each column. So dapat 
kumpleto sila. And these are some of the possible layouts of uh, Latin Square Design or LSD. If you can see if the treatments, if there are two treatment levels, so meaning dalawa din yung rows, number of rows natin, and then dalawa din yung number of columns natin. So right here. So ibig sabihin daw, ma'am, kailangan equal yung row numbers at column numbers ko. Also, dapat kompleto yung treatment levels ko sa bawat row and column. So as you can see here, for T equals 3 or 3 treatment levels, meron tayong tatlong rows, 1, 2, 3, and we also have 3 columns, 1, 2, and 3. So, perfect square siya. Kasi kaya siya tinawag ng Latin square. And for each row and for each column, dapat kompleto yung tatlo nating treatments. A, B, C, D. Sorry, A, B, C. A, B, C din dito. Dito rin, tatlo, A, B, C. And then A, B, C as well on the last. Ganon din sa second column and the third column. Kompleto. Kaya kung makagita nyo rin dito sa ating last possible layout, if T equals 4, or if there are 4 treatments, apat din ang columns, apat din ang rows. At kompleto din ang treatments natin for each row and column. So, ganyan si LSD. Kaya nag-work lang siya for small number of treatments. If there are 5 treatment levels, then madadagdagan to, there will be a total of 25 squares or 25 um, experimental units to be used in our study or in our experiment. Okay, so um, again, for the ANOVA table, given our design, which is LSD, meron na tayong apat na sources of variation. Kanina sa CRD, meron lang tayong dalawa, due to treatment and due to experimental error. Kanina sa RCBD, meron tayong tatlo. So meron tayong isang block, blocking factor, kaya nadagdagan ng due to blocking factor yung ating source of variation. But for the LSD, we have two so we have the row classification and the column classification, which gives us an additional two sources of variation for our analysis of the variance table. So we have here the rows. This corresponds to block one or blocking factor number one. Column rows, or sorry, column classification will be blocking factor number two. And then treatment, another source of variation due to the treatments, and then error or experimental error. So for the test of hypothesis, even um, if you want to test if there are differences among the treatments, so this is a sequential test. Ano, first is to look at the treatment uh, means. First, we have um, similar pa rin ito dun sa kanina natin. There is no difference versus at least one mean is different from the others. So test procedure is still F-test. So check na lang natin yung p-value. And then after testing for the treatment effects, we will also be looking at the test of hypothesis for the differences among the row factors. This is just similar to how we do in RCBD. Can check natin kung um, effective yung blocking? In this case, we are checking if the row classification is effective. So, ganun din, verse, uh, there is no difference versus at least one is different. And then for the hypothesis testing of the difference among the column factor, and then we are testing if the column blocking factor is effective. Again, there is difference. There is no difference in the mean versus at least one is different. Let's try this example. And this is um, uh, unfortunately the last example before this webinar ends. So an experiment to compare the potassium contents of four varieties of a composting grass was laid, laid out in Latin square design. This was done to eliminate the variation contributed by the chamber from which the varieties were with chemist as columns and source as rows. So meron tayong treatment na kano consider, which is on the varieties of the composting grass, but we know that there may be an effect or uh, nuis there, uh, some nuisance factors may be considered in our experiment, and these are the chemist and the source of the composting grass. So we have here the response variable still as follows. We will be looking at the potassium content. Experimental units is on the chamber. The treatment is the composting grass, which, which have four levels or four varieties. And then the row classification would be the source, and then column classification would be the chemist. So, so the data is summarized in the following 
table. Ayan na, medyo nadagdagan na naman yung ating um, table. Kasi meron na tayong rows as the source and then the columns are the uh, chemist. Tapos sa loob, nakikita natin sa ang treatment na assign say yung chemist 1 and sa uh, yung chemist 1 the source 1 ay na, na assign sa treatment 2 so therefore the value of the potassium content there is 0.826 tapos for chemist 2 source 1 treatment 1 yung randomly assigned doon hanggang sa dulo treatment 1 yung nasa chemist 4 tapos source 4 so as you can see here kompleto ano so for the first column say chemist 1 meron kang T1 2 T2 T3 and T4 ganun din sa column 2 T1 T2 T3 and T4 and so on pati sa column kompleto din lahat ng treatments natin so if you are to test using the again the ANOVA and assuming all the assumptions are satisfied, guys, ganun din, ano, may assumptions to be satisfied din. But for the interest of time, we'll only be um, assuming for the assumptions to be satisfied in order to proceed with the analysis of the variance. And this is what we, we will be looking at when we are testing using LS, under LSD or Latin square design. So meron na tayong four sources of variation. Again, source is the row factor. Chemist is the column factor, variety is the treatment that we are interested in, and the error uh, variation with the following p-values. So, ito na yung gagamitin natin to conclude whether, so first for the treatment means, are there differences for the row means and then for the column means. So, as if there are differences among the varieties, which is our interest, or the treatment levels in our experiment. So, as follows, ganun pa rin ang ating steps. For the p-value, that is 0.639, we are to compare this again with our um, alpha, which is at 0 0.05, and we know that 0 0.63 is greater than alpha. Therefore, there is no evidence or there is not enough evidence to say that at least one variety has a different mean potassium content. So for the treatment levels, we know that um, we did not, there is not sufficient evidence given the experiment that we have conducted for the treatment means, in this case, for the varieties of the composting grass. For the sources as of the row factor, given a p-value of 0 0.027, so given this, uh, that this p-value is less than alpha, which is 0 0.05, therefore, there is enough evidence to say that at least one of the sources has a different mean potassium content. And lastly, for the test of differences among the chemists as the column factor, again, a p-value greater than alpha suggests that there is not enough evidence to say that at least one source is a different mean potassium content. So these are the tests that we can conduct given the Latin square design that's used in our experiment. Lastly, for the relative efficiency, we can do this over our CRD. We can also do this over other tests or other designs, rather. And this is computed as follows. But no need to manually compute. We just have to interpret. Ano? Again, if greater than 100%, then LSD is more efficient. Over, or, uh, relative efficiently, less than 100%, meaning CRD is more efficient. Or no gain in the precision from doing the row and the column blocking factors. So doing this in our experiment, we have an RE or relative efficiency of 198.08%. With the interpretation that the added variation of the blocks resulted to a gain in precision. Thus, LSD is more efficient than CRD by about twice. So given an RE of almost 200%. So that is how we do Latin square design. And this is just a summary of the things we have learned in this webinar. First, we um, discuss about research and how Experiments are uh, an essential part of doing research. We also um, were able to um, uh, determine how an observational study is different from an experimental study. And then further in the experimental design, we know that there are four, or there are three important principles in experimental design, randomization, replication, and local Control. So for the structures of experimental design, we were able to cover completely randomized design or CRD, 
Randomized Complete Block Design or RCBD, and Latin Square Design or LSD. If you may notice, hindi tayo nakapag-consider ng mga two factorial designs. So, if you are to consider uh, more than two or more treatments or factors. So, doon na mag-work yung ibang mga structures na hindi natin na-discuss for this webinar. And uh, just to present the references, I would like to um, acknowledge my main reference here is from STAT 162, Experimental Designs 1. This is a course offered or being offered by the Institute of Statistics. So, thank you for um, letting me use these materials. And then for the videos that I, were, I was able to share with you guys, here are the links to this video presentation. So um, that ends my um, talk on basic experimental designs. I hope I was able to um, share my knowledge well and uh, in a fun way, hopefully, to you all. So thank you again for inviting me, LRC, and other um, faculty members from the Institute of Statistics. So maraming salamat po for giving us this opportunity to share our knowledge on this field. So maraming salamat for listening to all our audience. So shout out sa inyong lahat at sa bakikinig dito sa ating webinar series. Thank you po. All right. Thank you so much, Ma'am Dale, for generously sharing your knowledge and your expertise for regarding the basics of experimental designs. Ayan. So um, magmumu forward na po tayo sa inyong mga questions. But before that, I would like to make a shout out. Shout out na naman. Shout out po sa ating si Tita Agi ng OVCAA. Ayan, congratulations po on being officially a Lola. And hello po kay Baby Elon. Ayan, kahit talagang may chikiting ay nakatutok po siya sa ating webinar series. At syempre, shout out din po sa ating mga OVCAA friendships uh, natin na talaga namang full support sa ating mga paganap. Sila Ati Bev, uh, Kuya Adrian, Tita Elsa, Sir Neil, at Tita Rose. Ayan, maraming salamat po sa pagtutok. Alright, so if you have questions again, um, please uh, just comment them down below on our comment section box. Uh, later po, i-address po yan ng ating um, speaker. Okay, just please keep your comments helpful and considerate and kindly ask uh, relevant questions to our topic for today, which is uh, basics of or the basics of experimental designs. Moving on from your experiments. Ayan, marami pong nagpapasalamat sa ating uh, webinar uh, speaker for today, kay Ma'am Dale. Ayan, nagpapasalamat si Victoria Marie Fosolabo, uh, Rosana Madridejo Salem, si Jim Dumansi. Rome Laguatan, Merlin Riota Miyagi, ayan, Ruben Ibarra, Ibarra, Rem Almero, and Janice Paras Milo. At marami pa po ang nag-thank you sa atin sa ating FB uh, Live. Uh, kanina po na umabot tayo ng 1.8 na ano 1,800 na viewers. Ayan, thank you so much for staying. Talagang gustong gusto nating matuto lahat, ano? at from different colleges and universities po yan. Nakita ko po may MSU uh, from Marawi City, from Zamboanga, from Cotabato, meron din from Palawan, nakita ko po kanina, and then Holo, Sulu. Meron pa ba? <laughs> Watching from Mars. Wow. <laughs> Sino ito? Si James Bumatay. Talaga naman. Talaga naman. Watching from Mars. Alright. Sino pa? Si Mary Jean Taghap Katig. Ayan. Thank you daw kay uh, Prof uh, or Ma'am Dale. Ayan. Alright, so guys, kayo, ano mga major takeaways na for our session? Three hours yun, no? Ano yung inyong mga major takeaways? Sige nga, paki-comment uh, down below sa ating comment section box para malaman natin kung ano yung talagang pinaka uh, natutunan nyo from our session from Ma'am Dale. Okay? So let us see. Meron na ba? Ayan, may mga questions na rin. So okay, later on, ano natin yan kay Ma'am Ma Dale. Okay, okay na daw. Meron tayong question from Pearly Mariel Valenzuela Liaga. Sabi niya, if we already know po na may at least isang cultivar na different, anong test po ang gagawin to know kung alin po iyon? Ayan, from Pearly Mariel Valenzuela Liagas. Okay po. Okay, okay ma'am. Um... Uh... Yung earlier discussed natin na uh, uh, say we were able to significantly see a difference or at least one is significantly different 
doon sa ating test sa ANOVA. So, yun lang, um, as, he, as we have discussed earlier, yun lang yung kayang i-conclude kapag nag-ANOVA tayo, kapag nag-analysis of variance. So, to be able to um, check if which mean is significantly different, so um, one approach is to do pairwise mean comparison. So, um, pairwise mean comparison, although hindi naman, hindi po natin masyadong naisama na dito sa discussion, although um, that is actually the next step, um, there are several um, pairwise mean comparison tests that we can incorporate in our experiment or in our analysis, in our experiment. So, meron tayong, um, ang mga naalala ko ay LST, um, LST is least square, tapos least square difference, HSD, two keys test, and many other tests. And these uh, pairwise comparison tests have their own, kumbaga, they have their own strengths. So, pwede po tayong mag-check kung anong mga, um, kung anong mga, uh, kung alin sa mga test na ito yung uh, most applicable dun sa ating experiment. And another thing is on trend comparison and group comparison. So this will depend as well on the objective of our um, of our comparison. So kung okay na po tayo doon sa, say, just let, um, summarizing which means are, say, significantly different and then which means are um, um, just the same with each other or treatment effects that are the same with each other. So, dun siya sa pairwise mean. But if you want to say, uh, say do group comparison, kunwari, con uh, comparing a control group versus the treatment group, so that is on the group comparison. And then for the trend comparison naman po is if we are um, testing if there is, um, say, a linear trend or a quadratic trend, any other trend that we can see from our um, from our experiment. So, yun po. Um, actually, I was hoping I can include that in the webinar, but unfortunately, there are, we have a limited time. And uh, um, sana ay nakashare ako ng kahit pa paano konti about that. So, yun po, ma'am. Thank you po for that question. All right. Thank you, ma'am, Dale. I hope that answers your question, ma'am Pearly, Marielle, Valenciela, Liagas. All right. Pa-shout out daw po, nasa na yung nagpa-shout out kanina. <laughs> Hindi ko na makita. From, for, for excellent moderation and lecture daw po, ma'am. I forgot your name. Hindi na kita makita. Natatabunan yung comments. Ang bilis. Ayan, shout out sa mga taga Batanga State University, sa mga taga Misamis Oriental, sa U Ifugao State University, University si Jem Layog Domansi. Ayan. Nalobot na daw yung mga phone nila. I-charge nyo po yan. <laughs> okay? Ayan. Ma, marami nagpapasalamat po sa ating FB um, uh, live na comment section. Medyo talagang, ano lang, mabilis lang talaga mag um, tumaas. <laughs> Alright? And may question din po tayo dito. Medyo mahaba. Ma, may also posted it in our uh, Zoom uh, from Paolo Aquino. Um, Sige po, basahin ko po ng kaunti kung pwede ba ito. I work with traffic counting equipment which classifies vehicles passing through the road section. Factors like improper installation, age of equipment, and speed of vehicles may affect the ability of the equipment to count and classify. We perform one-hour simultaneous manual traffic count and compare the results generated by the equipment. 12 vehicle classes are to be compared. What types of st statistical tests shall we perform in order to know the quality of data? Mm -hmm. Factors like improper installation, age of equipment, and speed of vehicles may affect the ability of the equipment to count and classify. Um, hmm. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure, po what test you may use here. Because first, our concern here would be on the, the cars or the vehicle classes that were able to pass through dun sa ating simulation. As I understand, tama po ba ito ay... Um, Kung sino lang yung pum pumasok sa isa, isang intersection may nakalagay na equipment doon and then whoever passes the road are included in our simulation or in our 
um, the in our one hour simultaneous manual traffic count. So I'm not really sure if experimental design is is um tawag dito is uh, the best way to uh, to consider this study. Maybe there are some other statistical tests we can consider for this type of um, experiment. Po. So yun lang po. Thank you, Ma'am Dale. I guess ito po ay mas kailangan po ng mas madaming information para malaman kung ano talaga yung test. At yes. may nagtatanong din po ng mga uh, kung possible daw po na makahingi ng services ninyo. So I guess this is the time siguro po to plug yung ating mm -hmm. consulting ng, ng Institute of Statistics para po doon po sila uh, kumonta kapag may mga tanong po sila particularly, uh, specifically for their research. Okay po. So, for consulting purposes, for the sake of, um, syempre, ito naman, I, I won't be able to share this to you if, uh, uh, if not for the institute I am in uh, for now. Uh, I am with the Institute of Statistics, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and we are currently offering our statistical consulting, statistical consulting um, services. So you can head on to instat.uplb.edu.ph. So jaan po natin makita um, mga details on how to reach the institute when it comes to statistical consulting services. So head on to instat.uplb.edu.ph. So I think we can also include this in the comment section, Ma'am Shea. Okay lang po. Apo. Na um, uh, you can check doon po sa aming website. Uh, sa under services, so uh, look for statistical consulting group or SCG. I hope I was right, Mom Lisa. Ayun po. All right. So moving on, meron pa bang ibang questions? I guess yan na po lahat. Ano? Madami po silang natunduran for this uh, from morning until this afternoon. All right. Siya may add po. May nakita lang akong question kanina though. Um, sorry kung ito lang ang nakita kong question ano, but I would like to answer. Um, someone asked about star, if they can use star in the randomization. Yes po, merong function si star. If, if you are familiar with the star software, you can do randomization there para makapag, um, para, na, para ma design yung layout ng experiment. So CRD or CBD, LCD, LSD and other, um, other designs can be laid out in STAR. So that is actually helpful po for the randomization or for the layouting, which was not done here, which was not discussed in this webinar. But that is really essential and we can use STAR in the randomization and the layouting po of our experiment. So yun lang po, Ma'am Shet. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Ma'am Dale. Anyway, if you have questions nga po, you can always go to their website po and if you want to ask for their services, ayan, nandun naman po yung contact details nila. Okay? Ma'am, any parting message po for our participants na mga umatin today? Um, before I go there po, i-mention ko lang po yung nabanggit ni Sir Mon Campbell. Sir Mon Campbell is also one of the faculty members and in fact, the extension head of the Extension Committee Head of Institute of Statistics. We are also offering training services aside from consulting services. So if you are also interested, so head on to instat.upld.edu.ph for that. So um, any parting words? Um, I'm happy and grateful to be able to share with you all the knowledge I know about basic experimental designs. So um, this is indeed an opportunity that I don't want to miss. And uh, as far as I am concerned, po, I'm always willing to share my knowledge and my skills um, to my students and to other um, audience if possible. So, maraming salamat LRC, Ma'am Flor, Ma'am She, Sir Mark, Chico, and Sir Josh, and the whole LRC team po for giving us the opportunity to share our knowledge to our audience. So, maraming salamat po for inviting the Institute of Statistics for this um, webinar. This is indeed a good cause and for a good um, for a good goal. So, to be able to share what we know to our um, to our audience. So, maraming salamat po sa ating pag-attend sa session na ito. All right, thank you so much, Ma'am Dale. 
At likewise po, may we also shamelessly plug po yung ating Philippine team, yung Alamat UP, uh, for the tracking and reducing CO2 emissions from vehicles with Microsoft. Pasok po ang Pilipinas sa top three. We have beaten 48 other countries and they need our help to win the championship through vote voting po. Currently, nasa third ang Philippines po sa ranking from vote. So let's raise our flag. Vote for our Philippine team, Alamat UP. I will also post the link po sa I think comment section box. Please share it to your uh, friends and family as well para po uh, matulungan natin sila na manalo kasi it's, it's been a long way. 48 countries po yung kanilang nabit. Alright? So thank you. Alright, once again, thank you so much, Ma'am Dale Alcaide. Thank you for inspiring us to move forward from all of our experiments by learning the excess in-house of the basic experimental designs now. Hashtag Team LRC would like to take this opportunity to thank our speaker for her valuable time. So to award the Certificate of Appreciation, may I kindly recognize our beloved director, Dr. Benjamin Paula G. Flor. Let me just kindly read the citation. Josh. All right, this certificate University of the Philippines Los Banos Learning Resource Center present this certificate of appreciation to Christine Del R. Alcaide for serving as resource speaker for the first session on moving on from your experiment, basic experimental designs in the one stat at a time, a webinar series on basic statistical tools and techniques and research held today, November 23, 2020. Given this 23rd day of November 2020 at the Learning Resource Center, UPLB College, Laguna, signed by our director, Benjamin Paula G. Flor. Ma'am, nakamute po kayo. Pa-unmute lang po. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Dale, for uh, giving your time and your knowledge and your expertise to our 1,800 uh, avid uh, fans of LRC. You know, although we have more than 5,000 uh, registrants, I think they will be accessing your, uh, your uh, recorded uh, lecture some other time. You know? And uh, we hope that you learned a lot from this uh, webinar and we have more to come. We have more to come also under the Institute of Science and uh, uh, Institute of Statistics. We also would like to thank uh, Dr. Lisa Comia, the head of INSTAT, for allowing their staff to share their knowledge and their skills. Kung tayo po ay pupunta sa STAT, eh, hindi po ito madaling gawin. Kaya po, take advantage of this opportunity to uh, watch our uh, next uh, topics for free. My certificate pa. O diba? Bongga. So thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Dale, and for all those who have helped us uh, stage this seminar. Thank you also to uh, uh, Dr. Jean Loyola for first exposure in uh, LRC's uh, new series on one stat at a time. So hindi daw dapat bonggang bonggang dire diretso, konti konti lang, one stat at a time, para tayo hindi ma overwhelm, sabi nga ni Ma'am Dale. All right, thank you so much, Ma'am Bench. And again, thank you so much, Ma'am Dale, for being with us today. Now for the evaluation of this session, alam ko, iniintay niyo to. Please do not forget to answer the evaluation form after this webinar to receive your e-certificate of participation. Again, your comments and suggestions will be deeply appreciated by our team, Team LRC. Well, the evaluation link will be sent only to those who successfully registered for the event. You have until 7 p.m. today to send in your responses. So due to the influx of our registered participants, nasa 5,300 plus po tayo, we will be strictly implementing the 7 p.m. deadline. This will give us time to reset po our system in time for our next session on Wednesday. Only also kindly give us at least 48 hours to generate your e-certificates, which will be sent to your email too. But then again, guys, Apart from the certificates, more than the certificates, we hope you gain valuable insights from our session of the One Stat at a Time webinar series. So just a reminder po for our next session, 
That would be on Wednesday, November 25, 2020. Same time po tayo, 9 in the morning. Our session is entitled, It's Not Complicated, Analysis of Data from a Single, Two, or More Populations with Professor Angelin K. Mananghaya. Ayan. So, kung hindi pa po kayo registered, mag-register na po kayo kasi magko-close po yan a day before our session. All right. So, at this point, we would like to recognize our team or our team, thank our team, Team LRC and, a one, and the One Stat at a Time team headed by our director, Ma'am Benji, with the support of our new Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, Dr. Jean O. Loyola. On our technical side po is our University Research Associate, Joshua Michael G. Jonas, and our Webinar Production Online Director, Direct Prof. Mark Lester M. Chico. And of course, these learning sessions, again, will not be pass possible po without the help of the Institute of Statistics of the College of Arts and Sciences, again, headed by our director or by their director, Dr. Lisa N. Comia, ang Don Solueta po ng Instat, <laughs> si Prof. Ramoncito Campbell, ang Extension Coordinator and head po ng Statistical Modeling Division ng Instat. And of course, our very dedicated resource speakers for this session po is Professor Christine Del Alcalde, Alcaide. For session two is Prof. Angeline Mananghaya. And for session three is Professor John Lorenzo A. Yambot. May we also thank our two other members of Hashtag Team LRC, Tita Allen and Kuya Iwok. Hindi man po namin sila kasama dito sa Zoom space or sa camera. Sama-sama po kami at tulong-tulong sa mga programs po ng LRC. Alright, I guess it was an amazing and fruitful day today. This has been your moderator for today's session, Cheryl Hermosa Ibron. Guys, these are really challenging times for you and I and for all of us. How do we stay inspired and motivated? Simon Sinek believes that if, if we want to feel an undying passion for our work, if we want to feel we are contributing to something bigger than ourselves, we all need to know what is our why. What is your why? Kung nahihirapan po sa research, go back to your why. Why are you doing it? And together, let's do it one stat at a time. When we are overwhelmed with challenges, doubts, and fears, let's go back to our why. Hold on to it until all our goals and dreams are realized one step at a time. Thank you so much for joining us today's session. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay positive. We will see you on the next one. God bless us all and bye everyone.